On an overcast December afternoon, we come to you live from historic Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin, the 49ers of San Francisco against the Green Bay Packers. 49ers come in with a 9-2 record, one ahead of the New Orleans Saints and tied for the best record in the NFL. And the Packers currently in third place in the Central Division, chasing both Chicago and Minnesota. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist along with Dick Vermeil. The 49ers are here fresh from their most convincing victory of the season over Cleveland last Sunday night. And they get Chicago at home next Monday night. Is there a chance being here in Green Bay, Dick, they might find themselves in a valley between two peaks? Well, there's always that possibility, Vern, but both you and I know, and I think the fans know, the 49ers are the better team of the two. But if they're in the frame of mind that they don't think they have to prove it today, they could be in trouble because this Green Bay team, for a losing football team, is in a fine frame of mind. They believe they're going in the right direction. If the attitude for the Packers is okay, then physically, what must they do today to be competitive? Well, Forrest Gregg and the coaching staff really feel the number one thing they have to do is contain the fine 49er offense. They've got got to slow them down and then secondly they've got to get their own offense going 33 degrees as we approach kickoff 54 percent humidity winds out of the southeast and east at 10 miles per hour a chance of snow a little later this afternoon this is the 45th time the two teams have met San Francisco won the game last year 31 17 the last time the 49ers played in Green Bay was 1976 Ray Wershing will kick off Stanley, Fullwood, and Neal are the deep men. Ball taken at the 10. Out to the 30-yard line. Walter Stanley with the return. And the Packers will open up in good shape. Randy Wright comes in as the starting quarterback. And he will face these men on defense for the 49ers. Up front, Pete Kugler, Michael Carter, and Dwayne Board. Michael Carter is the most talented, but both of those defensive ends play very hard. Linebackers, McCall, Fonhorst, Michael Walter, and Keena Turner, who's having an all-pro year. And it's the McKayer, Griffin, Lott, and Fuller in the defensive secondary. One of the better secondaries in the NFL. First and 10 from the 32. Counter play, Jesse Clark jammed up and dropped by Michael Carter, the nose tackle. Michael Carter... At 6'2", 290. Michael Carter, the left side of your screen, number 95, working on Cannon. He jumps around. Great quickness. Comes in behind the offensive tackle pole and puts him down for minus yardage. And this is what Green Bay can't afford to do against the 49er defense. Get in the long yardage situation after that first down. Second down and 14. And the Packers do not open with Brent Fullwood in the backfield. They've got Paul Ott Carruth starting as the tailback because of the injury to Fullwood and Kenneth Davis. And Jesse Clark is the fullback. Here's the shotgun, and Randy Wright steps up, overthrows his intended receiver. It'll be third and 14. Packer offense with Randy Wright at quarterback. Now in his fourth year, joined by Paul Ott Carruth and Jesse Clark. And the wide receivers are Frankie Neal replacing Philip Epps, who's injured. And Walter Stanley. Epps might play a little bit today. Walter Stanley is the kind of receiver that can take the short pass and put it in the end zone. Good quickness. Rutgers Moran, Mark Cannon, Ron Hallstrom, Keith Euchre back off the injured list today. And Ed West, the tight end. Ron Hallstrom is having an all-pro caliber year at the right guard position. Third and 14. That's Pasquette in motion, a three-wide receiver set. Blitz. Right dropped. Fumble. Play was down. And it'll be fourth down. Ronnie Lott jumped on the ball, but uh, the play had been whistled there. Charles Haley, number 94, right here in the middle, is not picked up as he comes through the gap. There's no one in position in this protection to pick him up. Both guards and center are covered. The running back, Jesse, gets over there. Clark, 33, but not in time. That brings on Don Bracken, and Dana McElmore is back at the 35 to return the punt. McElmore re-signed by the 49ers in October. That's an excellent punt. But room to return, and a flag comes flying. McElmore to the 49, and there is a flag on the play. This is exactly what Bill Walsh wanted to do, is to get the good field position. He says it's the defense's responsibility to win this ball game today because Green Bay has not been real strong on offense. Shut them down. Our own offense move the ball out to the 50, and if we can't get it in the end zone or get the field goal, let's punt it and get the good field position. Defensive holding call now was the ball in flight. 
It was against the 49ers. Fred Wyatt is the referee as Bill Walsh, Steve Young look on. And there is Forrest Gregg. Option resting with Green Bay now, and Wyatt trying to get a decision out of them. That's Al I, Demis. It might be a first down. Here's the call. Holding number 22 before the kick. First down. Before the before kick the is kick. the key. Before the kick. All right. That's the key. First down. Tim McKire is the guilty party, and that'll be a first down. Green Bay. That won't uh, enhance the pleasure with which Mr. Walsh approaches the opening no. of the game. And then, you know, the 49ers come in here, the seventh least penalized team, competing against the most penalized team in football. Penalties. They don't want to turn that around today. Penalties have been driving the Green Bay Packers nuts this year. First down at the 30. Couldn't do much with their first series. See what happens now. Stanley in motion. Play fake. White deep across the middle into triple coverage. Caught made. Fumble. Uh -oh. 49ers ball. Must it, yes, 49ers ball. 49ers recover. Jeff Fuller, strong safety, falls on it. You'll recognize Frankie Neal will be coming in motion from the left side of your screen. Play action pass to freeze the linebackers inside. Steps back. Now the receiver will appear to the left of your screen. Here he comes. Catches the ball. Now get it tucked away, young man. Now it's still up around his chest. You've got to get that ball back underneath, underneath under that. Brings Clutch up an inter head. interesting point, Dick. The 49ers are last in the league in percentage of fumbles recovered. 28%. Into the flat. Roger Craig bottles the ball, has it out of bounds at the 42-yard line. You mentioned that, Vern. The 49ers have only recovered 28% of the balls that have been on the ground from a defensive standpoint. And if their luck changes and they start getting the turnovers, because many times that's just the bounce of a ball, that could also put them back into the category of the offense and, and that, and that they had when they were Super Bowl champions. And to go along with that, it's amazing for a 9-2 team, that 28% recovery factor. They come into this game only plus one in turnovers for the year. Last year, they were plus 20. Second down and seven. Roger Craig gets by the tackle of Tim Harris. Fumble! I think the 49ers got it back. Now, to turn that around, Vern, the 49ers lead the league in recovering their own fumbles offensively. <laughs> no fumble. You can tell it's a little cold out there right now, and they've got to play and warm up so they can really lock up on that football. Take a look in the middle of your screen. Oop, a headshot right there. That many times could be a penalty call. The ball's in the middle of the screen, bouncing around. Dave Brown, 32, going after it. Can't get to it. Well, the rule was down by contact, so down there was no contact. fumble. Okay. Third and eight. Montana back into the flat. Roger Craig almost had his head taken off at the 26-yard line. First down, 49ers. Check this Packer defense now. Alfonso Carriker, Ross Browner, and Robert Brown are the front three. Ross well, Browner has not played the nose guard position prior to uh, prior years, Vern. This is his first shot. Kind of tall for that spot. John yeah. Anderson, Brian Noble, Holland, and Harris are the linebackers. Harris is a big outside backer. Lee Brown, Stills, and Murphy, the defensive secondary. First and 10, 49ers. Montana, left side, caught by the tight end John Frank, who's coming off a career best game. It's Ron Heller instead. Number 89 instead of 86. 49er offense with Montana at quarterback. Tom Rathman, who's been a key figure in their success this year. Roger Craig in the backfield. Clark opens the game for Mike Wilson at a wide receiver spot. And Jerry Rice, who is on a tear. <laughs> the Packers are going to have to slow that group down to be effective. That's Harris, all Harris, Sapulu, Cross, Kali, Barton, and John Frank. Second and one. Roger Craig. He keeps those legs going. Good high knee action, pumps him, a lot of power. And you know, he's not a great big back at 224 pounds anymore. You know, you're not considered a big back at that size. What makes his running style distinctive? Well, I think the high knee action, the pumping high knee action, and he's able to run through contact. Good balance, he can ricochet off. He's not one of these guys that makes you miss a lot, but he can run through that contract. See the early scores rolling in. First down 10, play fake. 
Montana. Throws it short. Fumble. Scramble. Green Bay. Right now, coming from right here, you'll notice it'll be play action, and he'll come across, working underneath the linebackers on that play action. Johnny Holland, number 50, wraps him up. He pulls out of it. There goes the ball, drops out underneath the elbow. You get that elbow up, Vern, you get, and away from the body, your chances of dropping that ball out are much greater. Timothy Harris got it, his fifth fumble recovery of the season, first and 10, Green Bay. They have not been able to move on two possessions. No score. Pitch out, Paul Ott Carew. To the 16-yard line. Tackle made by Jim Fonhorst, number 55, for the 49ers. These two running backs for Green Bay, between the two of them, for the year, have 132 yards because Fullwood and Davis are both out. And Carruth getting a start at halfback today. But only 70 yards for the season. He was the most valuable player in the Senior Bowl in 1986 in an all-star game with other good football players, so you know he's a player. Second and six. Paul Ott Carruth for a couple. Running backs are nicked and hobbled for the Packers. Kenneth Davis on the inactive list with an ankle injury. And Brent Fullwood might play today. I think he'll play. There's a big difference between injury and pain in the National Football League. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a, a number one pick, a rookie running back, a little while to figure that out because when you are that caliber in college, they tend to baby you just a little bit. Shotgun on third and four. Oh, boy, Keena Turner really popped Walter Stanley. Hello. Hello. Walter Stanley, number 87, coming across the middle. Keena Turner gave him just a little tap. Center of your screen. Here, now here he comes, right underneath, being cleared out, coming right down the zone. Watch this. Boom! Oh, boy, does that hurt. That can put you out for a few plays. Stanley is still down. Medical staff is tending to him, and timeout has been taken. Sauvignon Blanc. Zinfandel. Cabernet Sauvignon. To all those who are coming home, and those we come home to, from Ernest and Julio Gao, all the best. On the Packers' sideline, Walter Stanley still a little wobbly, but uh, at least on his feet. Had to be helped off the field after that hit from Keena Turner. Now Don Bracken on the punt. Dana McElmore waits for it, and the 49ers are going to come out of this again with good field position. That's a low punt. John Taylor grabs it at the 45, and Taylor counter punches down to the 36-yard line. So the 49ers, for their second possession, come out of this with terrific field position. A 26-yard punt for Don Bracken and nine on the return. Nine forty-six to go. Scoreless first quarter. Jerry Rice hasn't caught a pass yet, but he will before the day's out, barring something totally out of the ordinary. And Dick, they really employ him in a variety of ways. Bill Walsh moves the talented guys he has around, so he can't zero in. On the left side of your screen, you see the wing back position. Right side of your screen, you see the wide out uh, position. In the middle of your screen, you see him in a slot position. Tough to know where he's going to be. Right now, he's at a wide right position. They hand it off to Tom Rathman, who gets a terrific block and then doesn't get much yardage. Tom Rathman is a throwback to the old fullback, Tommy. You know, 6'1", 232. He'll get after you as a blocker. Bill says that he can block the better football players in the National Football League as well, not just the average guy. He can block the good guys. Bill Walsh says that the change of Rathman to fullback, the insertion of him there and putting Roger Craig at the tailback spot has had a major impact on this team. Plus, you'll see Roger Craig at, at the fullback position as well. Now, this is Craig in motion. No score. Montana, Dwight Clark. That's his 502nd career catch. 
He and Art Monk were tied going into the game at 5.01 each. Here's Dwight Clark coming across the middle. They put the back in motion. Roger Craig, 33, going in motion to draw the defense to the strong side of the formation. Less help weak side now. There he is taking the slant pattern. Uh, one of the very favorite patterns of the 49er offense. This will be the last year for Dwight Clark. Remember talking to him in August, he didn't think he would even make the team because of injuries. Roger Craig. Tough Can't break it. the tackle. Brian Noble, who's having a terrific year, the linebacker. Brian Noble ran through as the guards pulled. If you can do that, sometimes you get pecked up by the backside guard, but Brian Noble, number 91, here he is. He runs through. Many times the backside guard will pick him up. In this case, it didn't happen. Follow Brian Noble, 91. See the guard block down? Here, he misses him. The tackle doesn't get to him. Bubba's got to get him down. See, now, Pup, Bubba was about 20 pounds lighter. He might have got him down. <laughs> that crossed my mind, and I'm sure it crossed the 49er coaching staff. They've had a weight problem struggle with that guy. Second down and 12. No score, first quarter. Montana, Dwight Clark, short of the first down at the 16-yard line. Bill does such a great job of varying his formations, then using little, that's a very high efficiency pattern. He's gonna complete that 75, 80% of the time. Maybe not to Clark, but to the back swinging or the back through. Very efficient type pass offense. Another typical Montana start. He's he, unbelievable. This he guy. is having probably his best season. Well, especially mentally. He's more into the technical sides of the game now than he's ever been. Third and one. Backs are split, Craig left, Rathman to the right, double tight end set, and there's Rice in the wing back spot. Play action Play pass. back, looking for Rice, they settle short for Rathman. And Rathman has a first and goal at the six yard line. Last week, you'll remember that they used Rice in the wing back position and then went in motion and threw him a pass. This time it's play action and they throw it to Rathman. Here's Rice coming in motion, he'll come out, now he'll run out into the flat. Tommy. Rathman, number 44, play action fake to Craig. You have to acknowledge the run in that short yard situation. There he is. Johnny Holland, number 15, sucked up, read and run. First down, move the chains. First and goal for the San Francisco 49ers. Bill is great at throwing the ball in this situation right here. Guess what? Rathman, touchdown, San Francisco. And Montana's 28th touchdown pass of 1987. He is unbelievable. End zone shot. You'll see what the play action fake does in this case to freezing the linebackers inside. Follow Joe as he fakes. Now look at Noble, 91, was successful last time in, in crashing. Not this time. It was a pass all the way touchdown. John Anderson with the responsibility defensively. It went over him, and Joe Montana has tied a personal best 28 touchdowns in a season and he's got three games and three quarters remaining Worshing's kick is up and good here's Rathman coming out of the backfield Tommy Rathman 44 Craig will cross the formation faking sweep to the outside here he comes slips up underneath the linebacker who is reading run John Anderson 59 tries to make the play can't get there Seven nothing on Joe Montana's 28th touchdown pass of the season. You know what's remarkable? In his career, every 12th completed pass is a touchdown pass. There's only one guy that I've ever broken down in this league that is better, and that's uh, Marino at one and nine. Brent Fullwood stopped at the 23-yard line. Bill Walsh wanted field position. He has had it through the first quarter as they have started at midfield both times and last time went 36 yards on six plays and got the touchdown toss to Tom Rathman. 7 0 with 6.56 to go, first quarter. Philip Epps makes his first appearance in the ball game now at a wide receiver spot. And Walter Stanley is back in the lineup for Green Bay after the injury. First and 10, Packers trailing by seven. Ball out, Carruth. Tries to toss right and gets it out to the 27-yard line.
Well, he ought to be wearing a smile. Eight for eight so far. <laughs> And, you know, really nothing that far downfield, all high percentage passes. And Bill Walsh's offense has always been known for the efficiency. And right now, for example, excluding the strike, Vern, excluding the strike, they score a touchdown. I have it here at every, uh, every 20, yeah, every 21 plays. That's the third best in the NFL. So, I mean, that's just outstanding. Pete Kugler is the injured player for the 49ers been hampered by injuries this year didn't start last week as a matter of fact Just top over. left of your screen Pete Kugler number 57 the left hand corner the tight end will block down on him right there locking him up both guard and tackle Euchre and Holstrom pulling out he's working inside out of the play just like he ought to trying to defeat that block and the offensive lineman Cannon number 58 rolls up behind his legs getting him from the back side Looks like the injury is to the right knee for Pete Kugler. He came in here with a left knee injury problem and didn't start versus Cleveland. The Giants have jumped on top of Philadelphia. How about this score? Atlanta 2 and 9 in Dallas. Scott Campbell with a touchdown pass to Floyd Dixon. And Robert Moore with a 20 yard fumble return. And the Falcons have jumped on the troubled Dallas Cowboys 14 0. Houston over San Diego 7 0. Amidst rumors flying around about Jerry Glanville's uh, spot with the Oilers, Pittsburgh over Seattle early. Rams have come back to notch Detroit at 3 3. And while we have a timeout, let's go back to Brent Musburger and get more on that Dallas Atlanta game. Well, Vern, here's how it occurred Atlanta struck first on a pass play, then they kicked off. A jarring tackle. The ball comes free. And it is scooped up by Robert Moore, who dashes in. It is now 14-0 Atlanta. Back to Vern. And that game is being played before about 45,000 unhappy fans at Texas Stadium. Meanwhile, our score is 7-0. Cowboys are in the playoff picture. Here's the wild card scramble going into action today with New Orleans and Minnesota leading the wild card fight then Philadelphia Dallas and St. Louis still mathematically alive and Green Bay as far as that goes is a mathematic shot at it. But if New Orleans wins the day and Philadelphia and St. Louis lose they're automatically in the playoffs right for the first time for the first time ever ever. Kugler on the bench Jeff Stover has taken his place second down and seven seven nothing ball game. Right to throw blitz is on. Sack again. And this is something the 49ers have not really been doing, sacking the quarterback. 14 sacks in eight regular games. That's yeah. not counting the strike games. That's been a problem, the pass pressure. You're going to see the defensive line stunt right there in the middle of the screen. Pass, here they go. See the tackle working around the nose guard? Here comes a linebacker, 55, Jim Fonhorse, up inside the scene. He flushes him up inside, and there is Mr. Haley, 94, getting his fourth sack on the year. Well, more problems for the Packers. The 49ers are number one in the league in yielding third down, first downs. In defensing third downs, they're tops in the league. And that's more important than actually converting third, third down situations. Flag is down. White's pass is caught short of the first down at the 31, if it stands. Keith Pasquette made the catch. I think the 49ers were offside. I'm not too sure. Let's see. We're going to an offensive lineman move. Illegal motion. Uh, offensive lineman move, I guess. Jeff Fuller made the tackle on the last play. Option resting now with the 49ers, and it was not enough for the first down. They'll refuse it. Illegal motion. Number 75. Declined. Fourth down. Penalty on Ken Rutgers or the infraction on Ken Rutgers. So the punting unit will come on again and again. The 49ers should come out of this in pretty good shape. Those penalties are adding up already. Green Bay comes into the game averaging 10 penalties a game. 9.7. Well, you can't have 0.7 of a penalty in one game. So it rounds out to be 10 penalties a ball game. Far too many. Dana McElmore is back to return. Don Bracken's punt. He's been inconsistent thus far. There's a good punt. Nice punt. McElmore at the 22. Flag is down, and McElmore is down at the 35. Stop made by Clayton Wisehoon, who played so many years with the New England Patriots and was oft injured there. That's a 47-yard punt and 13 on the return, but 
chances are we're going to get one of those ubiquitous illegal block above the back. Ubiquitous. You, ubiquitous. Yeah, that's the oh, word for the week. Don't say things like that to a PE major. <laughs> You embarrass me when you come uh, up with I throw one like of those that. polysyllabic things in there every once in a oh, while. Oh, now you give me another one. <laughs> Illegal block in the back, number 24. Give me that word again. Ubiquitous. Ubiqu I can't even spell it well, or it, pronounce it. <laughs> you find it at the end of the dictionary behind Omission. Huh? That wasn't in the dictionary at Calistoga. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> Someday we're going to get through a game without one of those flags. It isn't going to happen today. to go first quarter that man's team leading by seven Pete Cooper with a sprained knee and questionable whether or not he will be back in the game Forrest Gregg talks with his troops and I'm not sure what the delay is right now but there is one Bill Walsh we were in his suite yesterday at the hotel an interesting man came up with a package knocked on the door and delivered it to him <laughs> And opened the door and said, you're Bill Walsh coach, right? And the guy said, yes. He said, I'm Bill Walsh limo driver. <laughs> hey, there's a, a, there's more to that story we can tell a little later. So Bill Walsh met Bill Walsh. And was that guy excited about meeting Bill Walsh? Which Bill Walsh? Yeah. Montana, short. And Roger Craig makes the catch. Now, here's the interesting follow-up. You talked to Bill today and said, what was in the package? It was a combination scarf, uh, mitten product that was sent to him by Al Davis's son, Mark, who's in the marketing business for sporting goods. And it sent it to him. He's supposed to have it on here today, but evidently it's not loading up for him. Al Davis doesn't miss a trick. No. He's probably got a percentage of the business. I'm, I'm sure he does. 4.45 to go first quarter. Second and 11. Montana finds Jerry Rice out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Mark Lee makes the tackle, and for Rice, that's 47 catches for the season, and 14 have gone for touchdowns. Okay. He is on a streak now. You know what goes on in the pits? The nose guard right here, Jerry Boreski, number 61, was just pushed over there by 91 Noble, moving him over there. He got in the gap. He's fighting his way up inside. Now he's blocked by three different people. Oh, the problems of being a nose guard. Third and four, 49ers. Blitz coming. Montana. First down, 49ers at the 38. The leading ball carrier last week, and Walsh arguing about something with the headset off, and Montana had 43 yards on four carries Sunday night and gets the first down here. Montana in the middle of your screen did a great job last week. Here he is. Just follow him in action now. He goes back. The defense does a good job of taking the pattern away. Protection breaks down because he had to hold the football. Yes, he has time right now to throw it. Everybody is covered. No place to go. He jumps up inside the pocket. Now he's a ball carrier. He did a super job of this last week against Cleveland. First and 10, 49ers. Clock shows 3.48 to go first quarter. 7-0. San Francisco leads. Blitz coming again. Left side for Roger Craig. Skirts the sidelines and has another first down. Timothy Harris with the tackle. Redskins are playing at St. Louis. Let's find out what's happening. Here's Brent Musburger. Well, Vern, as you know, Jay Schrader back at quarterback, and he strikes first. 84 yards to Clark. Incidentally, this is the longest non-strike scoring play of the season in the NFL. Gary Clark in 7-0, skins with the lead, and back to Burn. All right, Brent, and you can see the empty seats in that uh, Cardinal Stadium in St. Louis. They are not drawing well at all, about 26,000 per game. Amidst the rumors of a move, here's Rathman across midfield to the 49-yard line. Mark Murphy, number 37, makes the stop. You know, people don't realize how good a defensive football team the Green Bay team is. They, re You know, they're number two in the league in yards per touchdown, forcing a team to run 170 yards for giving up a score. Number one is the 49ers at 235. And plays per touchdown, they're forcing you to run 38 plays before you score. Give these guys credit. They're a better defense than people really realize. Had some problems in the second half, and right now they trail 7 0. 3.05 to go, first quarter. They're going deep for Rice, and what a pattern he ran. He came back toward the middle, then cut back to his left and got wide open, and now is complaining about a possible hip tackle. Earlier we showed you that they try to get the ball to Rice in varied positions. Here he is in the slot. He'll work down and run the out pattern. He'll come down here 
and come underneath. Straight drop back pass. Getting back there nicely. Now see, he holds the corner up in bump and run position. That puts him on the safety, man to man. Now he's working the out pattern. Move Rice around to get him the football. And did you see Mark Lee bite on the post move? Oh, he did. That's where he scored last week in the same formation, going to the post. First and 10, Roger Craig skips to the outside and finds a little bit of breathing space down to the 25-yard line. Joe Montana, perfect today, and is now on a streak, including last week, of 17 consecutive pass completions. The 49ers are number one in the NFL, excluding the strike at 65.2% completion ratio. <laughs> one Here more. he is 100%. Can't do it any better. One more completion, and he'll tie his personal high of 18 in a row. 2.20 to go, first quarter. On the hip. That's 18 in a row, and John Frank fumbles it. And finally, Mark Murphy comes up with it at the five. What you're going to see, a full flow play to the left. Full flow. They're going to pull the guards. They're going to run the fake to sweep. The guards are going to go. Here they are. The backs are going. He's going to come out with a football, and the tight end comes across the action. 86, John Frank. Really tough to defense this. That's the second fumble by John Frank. Here he is underneath the crowd. There he is. He throws it out to him just like you draw it on the blackboard. Now get it tucked away. Good tackling. Knocks it out with a helmet. If you're going to turn the ball over, turn it over down here. Mark Murphy. Looks like he's been in some movies with Schwarzenegger. Randy Wright. Good pass. Walter Stanley with the catch. Randy right now, three of five. A year ago in Milwaukee had a big game against the 49ers with 328 yards, but two of those three interceptions were returned for touchdowns and cost the Packers the victory. You know, so many people evaluate a quarterback having a great game throwing over 300 yards. In the league, you lose about 48% of the time, or 52% of the time. First and 10. Jesse Clark tries to break through and gets it to the 20. The Green Bay wants to establish that running game. Get it going. See if you could run the football against the 49ers. You can keep the offense on the bench. And but we've already seen how well they move the ball. They've got to get that running game going. That's the problem. Can you run the football against the 49ers? Hey, it's not simple, but they're, they're ninth in the league, giving up 106 yards. That's excluding the strike. Second and seven, final minute, first quarter. Seven, nothing, and the 49ers have hurt themselves with two fumbles. Right into the flat. Brent Fullwood making his first appearance of the game. It'll be third down. Well, hard to believe it, but basketball season is upon us. And next week on CBS, a doubleheader for you. We'll kick off our NCAA coverage with a classic matchup. Louisville and Denny Crum against Eddie Sutton in Kentucky. And what a win for Kentucky yesterday as they beat Indiana in overtime. That's at 1.30 Eastern. And then the NBA kicks off on, tips off on CBS with the Chicago Bulls hosting Houston. And what a start for Doug Collins and the Chicago Bulls. Four wide receivers in on third and eight. Blitz. Another sack. Nope. And he was in the grasp of. That's a good call. Keena Turner wrapped him up. And Fred Wyatt called it. As you take a look at this from the end zone, the 49ers, uh, I mean, the Green Bay Packers are out of people to pick this guy up. Coming right now, here comes Keenan. He tries to pick him up, and he hurdles right over the top of him. A real good job. You never want to try to cut a gifted athlete. You've got to get him up high underneath that chin. That's the end of the first quarter. Forrest Gregg's team trails by seven, and they're getting ready to punt the ball. Don Bracken on the punt as we open quarter number two. Vern Lundquist and Dick Vermeil here at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. You know, Don Bracken talking with him yesterday, he says, you know, if I was kicking somewhere in the warm weather, I think I could average about two yards more a punt because this ball gets so hard as it gets cold, it's really tough to get the good punt. McElmore waits for it at the 42. 
Tom Homo was putting a little pressure on and get up there and get the ball. McElmore steps uh, steps away from it. But again, Dick, the, the field position for the 49ers is outstanding. Here they are on the 47-yard line, ready to go to war with, you know, 53-yard field. That's a short field to play on. On the third down play, you'll recall that Randy Wright, just before the break, went back and watched Keena Turner leap over Jesse Clark. You should never take on a gifted athlete by trying to cut him down. That's only a change-up move. See the helmet go down? This guy looks like a high hurdler going over the top of that guy. Bat him up underneath the chin. If you catch him when he's in the air like that, you'll flip him right on his tail. Roger Craig up the middle. And Joe Montana working on a... Per oh, here's a flag. And it's going to go against the Packers. Now, the Giants still lead Philadelphia 7-0. Dumb penalties. Dumb penalties. Personal foul, number 29. Call on stills. Ken Stills. That's, that's stupid. You're having a hard enough time beating him with 11 people. But don't give the officials the opportunity to help you. You know. Now, Forrest Gregg uh, is really unhappy about the penalty circumstance. Atlanta now leading uh, Dallas 14-3 uh, and Washington over St. Louis. Other scores, but just to get back to that point, Forrest Gregg is convinced that because of Charles Martin's tackle of Jim McMahon a year ago, the Packers are under the spotlight. Yeah, but I'll tell you this. If I were Stills, I wouldn't walk off the sideline next to that guy. <laughs> He's been known to get upset. Play fake. Great 19 catch. in a row. Great catch by John Taylor. And that is 19 passes in succession for Joe Montana. That is a personal high. The league record in the back of your mind is Kenny Anderson. They're excited about this Delaware straight kid. Low angle now coming from the right side of your screen. Play action pass. Fake the trap up inside. Freezes Tim Harris 97. He can't get out underneath the pass. There he is. Look at him. Reach for that. I'll tell you, that takes a lot of guts to go in there like that and reach for it. A lot of guys will short arm that ball. Taylor with the catch. That's his fourth of the season in Montana now. 19 consecutive passes. 14 of 14 in this game. I think when he runs over the sideline after hitting 19 in a row as a coach, you say, nice going. Don't say anything else. <laughs> after further review, the play stands. They did look at, a, on the instant replay, George Slatke. Of, <laughs> Why would they even look at it? I don't know. Huh? And don't Frank Susi is the communicator today for the NFL. But the play stands. <laughs> First down. First down. 49ers. Roger Craig tries to get blocks from Frank and Colley does out of bounds at the 14. Joe Montana now one pass away from tying the league record for successive completions. And that is spread over the last two games. He hit his last five Sunday night against Cleveland. And he's 14 of 14 today. I know he doesn't know that or isn't aware of it. It's not on his mind, but it's pretty impressive. Oh. And you know the ball hasn't been thrown far, uh, very far downfield. Yeah, it's just out there in the high percentage stuff. Second down and two. Watch out play action. Here. Exactly. Nope, they pitch it. Craig has to cut back inside and gets the first down as he is wrestled down at the 12-yard line by Johnny Holland, the outstanding rookie linebacker, number 50 out of Texas A&M. Tim Harris, number 97, the outside linebacker, here to the will be to the left side of your screen. Does a real nice job of taking on Rathman, number 44. See the tosses out there. Now he he plays it real well. See, turns him back up inside. He slips on the turf where he'd have made the play, forces him back up into the enemy defense, but still good outside linebacker play. 13-15 to go. First half, seven nothing. 49ers threatening again with the first down. Montana has now tied the record. And he finds Roger Craig at the nine-yard line. Did that you notice is, that, excuse me, Vern, did you notice that Roger Craig that time came out of the fullback position? Mm -hmm. They just move him up. Bill is great at moving a guy around to help him get the ball. What's it? 20 that 20 consecutive, consecutive completions it. ties the NFL record held by Kenny Anderson. He set it against the Houston Oilers. So one more, and Montana's in the record book by himself. And guess who coached uh, Kenny Anderson? Bill Walsh. That's right. At Cincinnati. Montana pumps, pulls up. That's it. Get on the ground. That'll be short of the first down as Joe is down at the four-yard line. Tackle made by Timothy Harris, number 97. 
he audibled, audibled and moved the formation to a strong formation to the right, trying to get the defense to move over, the secondary to compensate over to the three receiver side, and then throw the slant backside. Giants continue to lead Philly 7-0 in Giant Stadium and 14-3 Atlanta over the Cowboys. Washington leads by 10 over St. Louis. Cincinnati over Kansas City. Third and one. With everybody spread. It's third and one, a long one. They've got them in a spread formation. Montana changes the play. Flag down. 30-second clock. Wow. Delay of game. Oh. Delay offense. That drives you nuts, doesn't it? Oh, he does. And he, see, they have four wide receivers in the ball game on third and two. <laughs> Surprised at the call? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were. Well, see, that also surprises the defense because they're thinking of a short yardage defense. And here they come out. They have to audible now to a spread formation defense. Here they are spread out again. Third and seven. And now Fred Wyatt says timeout Green Bay. Packers call time. They trail by seven. Montana has hit 20 in a row over the last two games. First we'll be back. Out. The stars are going to twinkle and shine. How they'll shine this evening about a quarter to nine. I know I won't be late all oh, that half past day. I'm going to hurry there. I'll be waiting where... The they say time is what you make it. At Citizen, we prefer making it beautiful. About a quarter to nine. Citizen. New Tegrin medicated shampoo with conditioners leaves my hair looking great, and it's tough on dandruff. And how do you know what tough is? New Tegrin medicated shampoo with conditioners proves tough can be beautiful. 49ers, after the delay of game and the timeout, face a third and seven now from the nine-yard line. Thus far, Montana in this game, 15 of 15 for a touchdown. 49ers have three quarterback sacks, and Green Bay has been held to only 32 yards. Now, the 49ers can make a first down here because they could end up with goal to go on the three-yard line. But I'll tell you, this is a tough area in the field to convert a third down or long situation. Really Jer tough. Jerry Rice goes wide right, very top of your screen. He's caught touchdowns in the last nine games. Quarterback draw, touchdown. Oh, boy, how do you use the timeout? <laughs> Put four wide receivers in, spread the defense, and then call Montana nifty legs to run it. You can see that the defense is on an even defense, meaning there's no one on the center's nose. See the center right here, no one on his nose. They got the four wide receivers, everybody spread out. He takes the ball, steps back, the guards turn out, and their pass set. Whoop, touchdown. Man in motion, that's a no back backfield. No back. You've heard of one back sets, two back sets. That's a no back set. Bubba Paris looked around for somebody to block. Nobody within seven yards. Washing's kick hits the goalpost and bounds back. You know, the PAT is not automatic. There have been 25 PATs missed in the NFL this year, so it's not automatic. Watch it again. It hit the upright. Here it is. He really hooked it. Boom, direct shot. So it's a 13-0 49er lead. He's a man of impact. Dexter Manley sparks the skins against the force of Herschel and the Cowboys next Sunday on CBS Sports. Montana has thrown for one and run for one. The extra point no good, but the 49ers up by 13 at 11:29 mark of the first half of play. Ray Wershing, who had the extra point, hit the left upright. Brent Fullwood is the deep man of three for the Green Bay Packers, who have suffered from horrible field position so far. This will be Fullwood at the 12-yard line. Oh, nice pop in there. And he's down at the 25. Really Let's go back nice to the contact by Brent Jones there. Go back to the touchdown now and watch this quarterback trap draw. You'll see right here, Sapulo pull and trap a pass set right here to get the defensive lineman upfield. He will go wall off. He will try to wall off over here. Quarterback draw touchdown. I didn't see Vern the trap block move there. See that? It didn't really need the trap block. They were so far out of it. Bubba Paris looked like a hitchhiker all alone. And here's Roger Craig who went in motion, said nice play. Didn't get hit, nice play. 
Randy White fakes the uh, reverse and has to scramble. Now he's got some room. Twenty seven yard pickup for the quarterback out of Wisconsin. Focus your attention in the middle of the screen now as the quarterback runs the fake. All right, Moran, 57, coming out on the boot block right there. Gets Stover, picks him off. Now it's Michael Carter, 95, trying to make the play. And this guy, Wright, is really not known for his running abilities. He really isn't, but he does a good job in this case. First down. That One is, of the few that they've made. That's the third, as a matter of fact. In 87, he came in with 35 yards. He picked up 27 on that play. Three-step drop. Looks left, fires right. Phillip Epps out of bounds at the 41. Well, we mentioned field position, and Bill Walsh stressed how important it would be to his team today. The Packers have had horrible field position. Now, look at the 49ers. Four possessions, and they've started at their own 42. Green Bay with four possessions, and they have started on the average from their own 18-yard line. That's playing on an awful long field. <laughs> yeah, and in contrast... It's playing on a short field. So Seven. far, his game plan is working perfect. Randy Wright, second down and two. Clark in motion. Toss to Paul Ott Carruth. Has the first down, fights off a tackle, and picks up an extra two. Jim Fonhorst, four-year man from Minnesota, number 55 with the stop. That's the fourth Packer first down. Jim Fonhorst is playing good football. Both Mike Walters, who's leading the inside linebackers in tackling, leading the whole defense with 64 tackle. They're both playing real well. Fonhorst is a guy that was waived in September and brought back to play. Walters was raised from the Dallas Cowboys, so you can see that the 49er talent department does a real good job of locating guys. First and 10, Packers 13-0 the score, 10-25 to go first half. This time it's Jesse Clark. And another modest gain down to the 35-yard line. Keena Turner and Dwayne Board with the tackle. In running the football, you can't be embarrassed. You can't be embarrassed with a four-yard gain. Hey, if you've got four yards, be happy. Keep running it. Keep oh. running it. Don't give up. Gain four three times. That's first down. Hey, darn it. Right. Injured player now for the San Francisco 49ers. Looks like it's Dwayne Board. Despite a 4-6-1 and one record, Green Bay has gotten off to quick starts this season, particularly in the first quarter, but they trail by seven today. But look at the problems, Dick, in the in the in third, third and fourth, and fourth quarter. quarter. You Why? know what it is? I think, I really think Forrest Gregg is a very good motivator. He's an intense guy, he's a demanding guy, and these kids have lined up and played hard in every ball game. They have a great attitude for a losing football team. But then they run out of emotion. The halftime slows them down, and if something negative happens in the third quarter, they really can't get going again. If something positive would happen for these guys, they could get rejuvenated and get going again. And so far this season, it really hasn't happened for them. They've got to make it happen. Right now they trail by 13. And they've got a second down and eight. This would be the second defensive lineman down. Remember, Pete Kugler, number 67, went out of the ball game earlier with a knee strain. This is Dwayne Bohr, the opposite defensive end, number 76, is down. And he is really a defensive leader in terms of consistent, intense play. Watch him at the top of the screen. Number 76. Now he's on Ken Rutgers, number 75. See, they're working inside out. He's trying to work off the block. Jesse Clark, 33, goes up inside, and it's just sort of everybody collapses on him. A big pile of bodies. You really can't see what happened to him, but it doesn't appear to be too serious. You can't afford to lose football players like this, not only from a physical standpoint. This guy is a contributor from the mental attitude standpoint of the game. He is a real tough giver. So board is out. Charles Haley will come in and take his spot. Coming up next Sunday on CBS, doubleheader action. Most of you will see Dallas against Washington. Others, Minnesota against Green Bay at 12.30 Eastern time. And then most of you will watch the Giants at St. Louis. Others will see Atlanta against the Rams. That's a week from today. From the shotgun. Paul Ott They got it walled right. up. They got it walled up. Fumbles out of bounds. It'll be a first down at the 22-yard line. They had it walled off from the shotgun. You can see the defense get sealed. You're going to note here, they're in the shotgun. Both guards are going to pull. Notice the big guard here. He's up. He's going to run, kick out. He's going to try to seal it off. Look at them. Both of them coming out there. They get the block right at the point of attack. 
Hallstrom, number 65, gets a seal right there. Seals him off just for another few yards. First down. McKayer fought through Hallstrom's initial attempt at a block, but that's a first down. And there is Polot Carruth lined up as a flanker this time. Stanley looks at him. And Randy Wright looks for Stanley. Finds him at the 11-yard line. Another Green Bay first down. Tim McKayer makes the tackle. Walter Stanley to the left middle of your screen in the slot, using a little bit of the 49er attack. High efficiency, short, nine, ten-yard hook stuff right there in front of the man-to-man -man coverage. Tim McCarr comes up and makes the tackle. Hard to stop that stuff without getting help underneath from a linebacker. Stanley goes wide left. Word from the 49 bench, the 49er bench is that Dwayne Board might be back in the game. First and ten, Green Bay trailing 13-0. Hackett in motion. Oh! And Paul Ott Carruth is hit by Farnhorst at the line of scrimmage. Boy, I'll tell you, when you play nose guard in the National Football League now, you get hit from every angle. In this case, Joey Hackett, number 89, coming in motion, comes in and wham blocks him. Boy, I'll tell you, that smarts a little bit. Watch this. Bang! Right in. And Carter actually played it real well. Von Horst, number 55, steps up and makes the play, but the nose guard's got to be ready to be hit from every position, every angle. Well, we have focused on Joe Montana's exploits as you look at Michael Carter. Randy Wright is six out of eight. On second and ten, he'll throw from the shotgun, facing a potential blitz. Randy Wright, that's caught, but it's only a four-yard gain. It's down to the seven-yard line. They can make a first down before they score. That really changes your thinking offensively down here. And I, I don't think you think in terms of field goal. You think in terms of four down to score when you're behind 13 to nothing. Playing an explosive offensive football team like the 49ers, you're almost better in this situation to forget field goal. Offensively now, the Packers have sent in Tom Neville and Alan Feingrad, a couple of uh, offensive linemen. Better pass protectors. Neville is better pass protector than Moran. Weingard, Weingrad, rather, a better pass protector than, than Euchre. From the shotgun, flag down. Oh. This will be a dead ball foul. Illegal motion against the Packers. I can't believe it. No wonder that Forrest is so upset about the penalties. How many is that already in the first Ball half? Start, number 72. That will be the third that is accepted, but there have been a couple declined. Declined. Yeah, mm -hmm. He's got to be at least five or six. Look at, look at Forrest. There's one guy I would not want mad at me. <laughs> He's doing a real good job of holding these guys together. I think in terms of doing what I do for a living now and going into visiting team locker rooms and home team locker rooms, a losing football team, it's the best attitude of a losing football team I've been around. They believe they're going in the right direction. They have confidence in doing it the right way. Then they know where they're going. Good leadership by Forrest Gray. That's a nice tribute to Forrest Gray. Timeout Green Bay, their second timeout. They've got one left. Forrest Gregg's team started at their own 24, got a 27-yard run from Randy Wright. Nice run from Paul Ott Carruth and a pass to Walter Stanley. But now, from the 12, they face a third and 11. Shotgun. Wright pulls up, throws it away. He was Good off coverage. balance when he let it go. Good coverage, too. Good coverage downfield. It was no one obviously open. You can see as you watch all 22 on the screen now, everybody here is covered. Everybody going out for a pass is covered. No one to throw the ball to. Man in motion, shotgun formation, deep snap, good protection. He's, able, he's allowed to step up inside the rush. There he goes, throws the ball. Everybody's got a man or two on him. Good coverage. Now uh, Packer fans are trembling because Max Zendejas is uh, on to try the field goal, and he had a one-for-four day last week against Chicago with two officially blocked. One he kicked into the rear of one of his linemen. Yeah, Gopher could have blocked the one they called a block. It was so low. 30-yard field goal. That looks good. It is. So Zendejas, who was the star of the replacement games for the Green Bay Packers, is back on track. And the Packers get on the board with 7-10 to go. And it's now a 13-3 deficit, which they face. Tell you, kicking the ball in the cold weather is not as easy as kicking it in the uh, warm weather. Even from the, the holder standpoint, accepting the snap from the center, it's tougher. Your hands are cold. The ball appears harder. It's just a little bit more delicate play. 
Coming up next week, doubleheader college basketball starts it with Louisville against Kentucky at 1.30 Eastern, and that'll be followed by the NBA game, our first of the season. Houston against the Chicago Bulls, live at 3.30 Eastern time. You know, I watched the Chicago Bulls work out one day in Chicago. My brother works for the Bulls, and I was really impressed with the coaching job going on in professional basketball. I, first off, I never really watched a pro team work, but I'll tell you, they got after it, and they worked. No wonder they're winning basketball games. Well, they're off to a great start. Having Michael Jordan in the lineup helps a little bit. I think I could coach him. <laughs> Funny, you were talking about cold weather here. Of course, the most famous game ever played in this stadium was the Ice Bowl game in 67, Dallas and Green Bay. Yesterday, when the 49ers arrived, the traveling party got out on the one-yard line in the south end of the goal line of the end zone and ran through the famous Bart Starr quarterback sneak. Jerry Walker, the PR man, played Bart Starr. Jim Warren, the security man, played Jerry Kramer. And Rodney Knox, the assistant PR guy, was Jethro Pugh. And there is a tackle at the 17. John Dorsey makes that tackle. You can see how many times you can read the attitude of a football team through the execution of their special team. See the enthusiasm, the intensity? This football team has not quit. Now the 49ers back on the field and keep in the back of your mind. Well, put it in the front of your mind. Joe Montana has hit 20 passes in succession. The end of last game and this one. He's 15 in a row today. Tight formation with Walsh. Watch out pass. No, nope, he comes with a run. Roger Craig. See how he can run through tackles? You cannot tackle him with your arms because that strong leg action, you've got to get your pads on him. John Anderson makes the tackle here. Craig is one of the weapons, of course, and Jerry Rice has become the most explosive. So far, he's caught a couple of passes today. He's working on a streak of touchdown passes in the last nine games. What are the factors, we asked Bill Walsh, that make him so good? <laughs> They're just this one of many. And we'll talk about it after the play. <laughs> Second down and three. Tom Rathman. Uh, Bill Walsh was talking about Jerry Rice yesterday, and these are the factors he said that make Jerry Rice a great receiver. First of all, his stamina and his strength. Yeah, he is a strong wide receiver, no question. Secondly, he has an efficient running style. No wasted Very motion. Very smooth. No wasted motion. Very graceful runner. And an ability to lean and reach for the ball without yeah. losing any speed. Yeah, it really doesn't. And he can catch it when he reaches. And number five after great hands is Joe Montana. <laughs> Third and one. Montana is now in the record books. Ron Heller, number 89, comes up with his 11th catch. And that puts Joe Montana atop all other quarterbacks in the league. 21 straight. Five last Sunday night against Cleveland. And 16 in a row today. Here he is. Remember now, it's third down and one yard to go. Tim Harris, 97, flushes him. Get him out. Again, a running back trying to cut a linebacker. Heller out there all by himself. Now Tom Rathman goes around the right side out to the 42-yard line. 13 to 3 with 6.05 to go first half. Montana threw a touchdown pass to Rathman in the first quarter, then ran for a touchdown on third and seven from the 11-yard line for the second TD. The extra point no good. The Packers then came back with a field goal drive, and it's now 13 to 3, and Montana streak still alive at 21 in a row. Now Harry Sidney just came in the ball game, number 24. Bill utilizes people, puts them in specific spots, and many times then highlights them when they're in that position in the formation. Here he is as a blocker. Roger Craig. To the 40-yard line. Well, they're going to put him out of bounds at the 43. Harry Sidney was set in for one purpose. You go in here, and you get the block at the point of attack as we try to get outside with the toss. Here he is. Follow his block now. Collie pulling, turning up inside. Good kick out on Mark Lee. Oh, he grabs him with his left hand. Us. Oh, and great running by Roger Craig. That's a gain of 16 at the 42. It's take first long down. those young guys to learn to reach and grab with their hands, doesn't it? <laughs> Sidney stays in, replacing Rathman. First and 10, 49ers lead, 13 to 3. Harry Sidney loses yardage. 
Good the defense 44. by Tim Harris again, 97, the outside linebacker. 5.17 to go before a sellout crowd at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And this sellout crowd of 50,000 plus has watched the Packers fall behind as Joe Montana threw a touchdown toss to Tom Rathman in the opening quarter, scored on a seven yard touchdown run in the second. And then the Packers came back after the missed extra point to score a 30 yard field goal. It's 13 to three. Montana. Got it. John Taylor again. And the streak is now at 22 after the 33 yard gain. Play action pass on second along just to hold linebackers, isolate people. Now to the right of your screen, you're gonna see the ball thrown right where it has to be thrown, high into the outside with inside coverage. Ball coming down, see it is high into the outside. John Taylor working on Mark Lee, fine play. Now John Taylor, they say, is a fine runner with the ball after he catches it as well. Will be a punt returner when they gain more confidence in his ability to field the punt consistently. First and 10, 49ers. Roger Craig gets a good block from Sydney and the hit from behind and tripped up. Brian Noble, the linebacker, number 91, caught up with him. Brian Noble is having success running through as the 49ers pull their offensive lineman. He's running through, getting penetration, and making the play from behind. Now, he leads the team in tackles with 60 tackles coming into this ball game. I was talking to him in the locker room yesterday. I said, well, your parents get to see this game. He says, coach, we have a dish. We have a dish. My parents see every game. He lives in Huntington Beach. <laughs> Second down. And 10 officially. Montana. Down at the eight yard line. Johnny Holland makes the tackle this time. Good defensive coverage in the end zone. It was. You know what happens when he starts running? He was waiting for a defender to come off the coverage, but the coverage was good. They maintained their discipline. Drop back pass. Now he's looking to his left. He wanted to go down the hole. See, there's Roger Craig. Now watch him back up inside. Now he's back up inside. He's waiting for a defender to come out of the coverage. Look at Rice. He's giving, hey, here I am. Oh, no, Dave Brown, he's the experienced guy, 13 years in the league. <laughs> he's intercepted 52 balls. He wants another shot. Montana too smart to give it to him. Timeout has been called by the 49ers to discuss this third and seven play. So Montana... Heads over to talk with Bill Walsh. Coming up at halftime, we'll have Brandon Irv with scores and highlights of other NFL games on this first weekend in December. They'll also be talking to Mike Ditka and Jerry Burns about tonight's game. That's coming up at halftime. I hope all of you got a chance to see Mike Ditka roller skating through the Bears' offices. That's one of the funnier things I've seen this year. Doesn't that all stem from a comment that Ditka made about playing uh, uh, under uh, the dome ceilings? Yeah, he like called the uh, Metrodome the roller dome. Said roller the dome. Thing domes are good for a roller skate. So Mike Lynn sent him a pair of roller skates that they trained cross-country skiers on. Yeah. I'll tell you this, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything to ruffle the feathers of the Minnesota Vikings. They are a fine football team and capable of beating the Bears. Chicago currently has a two-game edge over Minnesota, and they play tonight. Green Bay trails 4-6-1, and one, followed by Tampa Bay and Detroit. You know, the Bears, though, are, are, are maybe not as dominating defensively as they were when they were world champions, but I'll tell you, they sure look good when you watch them play. So do the guys in white here. Third and eight. They lead it 13-3. to three. Montana lofts it deep, and the streak has ended. And it ends at 22 consecutive passes. And Joe Montana is now a poorest 17 of 18. Jerry Rice, again, lined up in a different position, wing back to the tight end side of the formation. Man in motion working outside. They wanted to get to him. He gets worked over there by the linebacker, 59, John Anderson. Now he's working back underneath Mark Lee, 22, who actually falls down. Tim Harris works over, and he is a giant linebacker at about six foot six. That brings on Ray Wershing. A 25-yard field goal. He's He is 88%, I think, in his career, 89% in his career from here. And he's now a perfect 4-4 four four for this season. He misses very few inside the 40. In fact, in his entire career of 15 years, he's only he's 80% inside the 40-yard line. Very efficient. 25-yard field goal extends the lead back to 13 now, 16-3. to three. three and a half to go in the first half. The 
49ers, of course, won the Super Bowl, and they were 8-3 and three in 81 after 11 games, finished at 13-3. and three. In 84, they won it again. They had a 10-1 and one mark at this spot then, finished at 15-1 and one and went on to win it. Now they're 9-2, and two. and uh, in their favor, Dick, first of all, a great tradition of winning since 81, tradition being six years old in December, and also the fact that they've got their final three games at home. They yep. face Chicago next week, then Atlanta comes to San Francisco, and they wind up at home against the Rams. The Chicago 49er battle will be a classic. 17 and 3 in December since 81 when they won their first Super Bowl under Bill Walsh. You know, it, it strikes me this season that there is no dominant team. I don't know whether that's the malaise of the strike or whatever, but these guys have certainly got to be a candidate for Super yeah. Bowl contenders. The Cowboys were always given credit for being the finesse football team in the NFL, but really the 49ers have taken that. They really finesse you. And the, the, return to the, 25. the opposite of that of the Bears. The Bears just beat you up physically, you know? I mean, and they've stayed with that tradition, a reflection of their coaching staff and the intenseness of Mike Ditka. Cowboys have scored now and trail Atlanta by four in the second quarter, and St. Louis also scored. They trail the Redskins, Cincinnati on top of the hapless Kansas City Chiefs. Seattle leads Pittsburgh at the half, and Indianapolis over Cleveland. Detroit leads the Rams in the second quarter. First and ten, Green Bay. They trail 16 to three. Three wide receiver set. They go from the shotgun. High snap. Paul on Carruth. On the draw play, Ronnie Lott hauls him down, but not until he gets to the 48-yard line, a 23-yard game. Shotgun formation, running back number 30 set to the middle of your screen. Paul Ott Carruth, high snap, not too high. He gets it, there it is. He gets underneath Todd Shell, number 90. Moves, he's up, running straight at. Now he's moving into uh, Lott. That pass into the flat. They're going without the huddle. Walter Stanley makes the grab. And Randy Wright has already called another play. What Randy Wright is signaling was two others right there. He was signaling the strength of his formation. He wanted his two wide receivers to the right side of the formation. And this prevents Bill Walsh from making defensive changes when they go without the huddle. Well, they've got four down linemen in there already, so they're all right. Into the flat, Jesse Clark. Around the corner, first down at the 40. Clock has stopped. Now they can huddle up. Clock stops at the 221 mark. A little bit of a surprise to go to the hurry up with uh, three minutes to go. I think it's a good offensive move. Hit, you're down 16 to three. Get after him. First and 10 now at the 40. 16 to three. San Francisco leads it. Stanley goes wide left. 49ers have their pass rushing defensive ends in there, and Haley 94 and Roberts 91. See if they're disguising a blitz or they're coming. They are not. They're sending four. Right clock, 33-yard line. 2.15 to go before halftime. And again, they go without the huddle as Philip Epps makes that grab. See if they can get the play call before the two-minute warning. Apparently, they will. Haley back up inside, faking the blitz. Four-man rush, man open. Oh, terrific grab. I think he's in. Philip Epps, nice tap dance on the sideline. Philip Epps worked in between the short zone and the deep zone in the coverage. Now, here's a guy that did not practice all week. He's out. He had abdominal muscle pull, which is really tough to overcome. The little guy fought back, got treatment all week from the fine medical staff here. Here he is in between the deep zone and the short zone. First down. There he is watching both, both feet in the ground. Right foot. Left foot, both inbounds. Two-minute warning at 1.57 to go. First and 10, Green Bay, 1.57 to go. They've got the ball at the 49er 20-yard line. Three wide receivers to the right. They lob it short to Jesse Clark, and he's out of bounds at the 17-yard line, a gain of four. As Forrest Gregg went to his two-minute offense at the 3.30 mark of the first half. They have three wide receivers set down to the bottom of your screen here in a trips formation. 
Neal now is going to shorten that defense up by moving inside. Now they're going to come from the inside out with a third, a fourth receiver. Hear him line out. See, they're trying to run anybody out of there in that man-to-man -man coverage and create a soft corner. Clock stopped on the out-of-bounds play. 1.52 to go in the half. Packers have one timeout left. Again, they threaten the dog and uh, sending five this time, or four again. And Frankie Neal makes the catch and is out of bounds at the 15. That's a gain of two. It'll bring up a third and five. This would be a big lift for the Packers if they could get seven points out of this field position right now. Big lift for them going into halftime. Come back at second half, and see that's assuming they make the extra point at 10-16. That'd be a big lift for them. Both quarterbacks with a hot hand in the first half. Montana has missed one. Randy Wright has missed only three. Third and five from the 15. Two receivers left, two right. Again, a four-man rush. Hey! And they get him. Charles Haley gets the sack at the 22. That is the fourth sack of the first half. For a 49er team that came in with only 14 quarterback sacks in the eight regular games. I really think the big offensive tackle in this case was laid off the snap, and Haley ran right hunt around him. I don't think it was a physical breakdown. I think it, he just didn't hear the snap. You'll see Rutgers number 70. See, he's still in a three-point, two-point stand just sitting there, and Haley ran right by him. <laughs> he gets credit for a sack. Never moved. He missed the snap count. Zendejas will try a 40-yard field goal. He's hit from 30 earlier. He's five for six this year from this distance. Don Bracken is the holder, the punter. Flag is down. Flag is down in the end zone. That's a delay of game. They'll have to tack on five yards. No play. When you add five yards to a field goal, when you go from 40 to 45, you're cutting your efficiency down about 15%. That much. At least. Especially for a young kicker in the cold weather. Who came from Arizona. Who came, that's right. And from the Washington Redskins. That's right. And the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Zendejas was a draft choice of the Cowboys last year and lost his job to Rafael Septian. Wound up going to the Redskins where he had some real problems and was cut. And then uh, came on to replace Al Del Greco here during the replacement games. And then two weeks ago, they cut Del Greco. When Zendejas had gone 10 for 10. But last week, one for four with two blocks. Now from 45 yards out. drive coaches crazy they really do bro. are you telling me that you used to have a couple of problems with Tony Franklin or, or punters and kickers the most sane punter I've ever been around is Max Runniger who is now punting for the 49ers and doing a good job not spectacular but he's not a psych case you know? <laughs> Well, this time, Zendejas got it. Tim McKayer comes over he, the top and almost got there. He's coming around. Watch him reach out now. Watch him reach Ooh, out there. But it's underneath. Good protection all the way. Now, Zendejas, he knows it's in there. Look at this. Those kickers, they develop those moves. <laughs> That's a physical move for a kicker. <laughs> Sixty-eight seconds to go. Watch, go, go back now, Dick, to the third That's, down play when Ken Rutgers missed the snap count. I haven't seen this in a long time. You're going to see the big offensive tackle right here. The ball is snapped. Haley goes around him. He doesn't even move. Very unique. Oh, hey! <laughs> Boy, Boris Greg sees that in Monday film studies. You think he's going to be upset? Somebody was thinking about Christmas. <laughs> Squib kick, taken short, bobbled short. Harry Sidney has it. And he's not going to get very far to the 22-yard line. Look at the intensity in that kickoff coverage. 16 to 6 now with 62 seconds to go. First half, and Montana comes back on. Thrown for one and scored one. You know, Walsh's basic philosophy of offense almost stops him 
from saying 16 to 6 I'll run three plays eat up the clock and go on and I wouldn't be surprised to see him go right into an offense and try to get three points to six points on the board within this situation well they've got a first down at the 22 and again the place is full as it is every time the Packers play here Montana caught by oh, bobbled by Jerry Rice see what I mean yeah he won't sit on a lead and just assume that hey we've got the lead we'll make sure nothing negative happens he thinks positively in regard to the execution of his offense a lot of guys would be scared to death to throw that pass in this situation here's Rice going out of bounds right corner of your screen almost with that see that lean and reach normally he catches that football and just missed dragging his left foot down here's Montana back He'll be sacked. Ezra Johnson, who has been out with an injury. Ezra Johnson, he knows where the quarterback is. He sacked the quarterback in his career 84 times. He was talking to me in the locker the other day. He has an eight-month-old baby girl, and she has become the sacker in his house. She's the boss. Timeout has been called by the Packers. That is their final timeout, but it's third down for the 49ers when we come back. 53 seconds to go before the halftime break. The 49ers up 16 to 6, but facing a third and 17 right now. Now you're liable to see some kind of trap play up inside that, you know, the down four of Green Bay coming after him on the, uh, with the rush and that kind of thing. Try to trap one of those guys and break a run up inside and punt the football if you don't make it. Packers call timeout in hopes of getting the ball back and particularly forcing an incomplete pass here. Now there they it keep is. it. Rathman. How about this? Is he tough? <laughs> to the 50-yard line on the trap play, a 35-yard gain, and now the 49ers will call time. <laughs> oh, the shifting fortunes, huh? Third and 17, they call the trap. Bill Walsh crosses him up, and now they are in uh, potential scoring range. Bruce Colley, the big offensive lineman, is going to pull over in here. He gets the bin block right here. The ball's handed up, up inside in front of the quarterback. Ben Block is back blocking in the middle there, right there. See, now the guard turned up inside. Colley does poor tackle by the linebacker, John Anderson. He should make that tackle. Here's Ezra Johnson, 90 chasing him. Watch him butt this guy right here. Boo! <laughs> That's the longest run of his career. The longest run coming in was 29 yards. How long was that one? 35. 35. And that's what sometimes distorts evaluating a defense. That's a, like a prevent type defense. Mm -hmm. The running back gets the long run against it. If I were a running back, I'd want the coach to let me run in this environment. Let me run in that situation because your chances of getting the good run are better. So by crossing up the Packer defense, a 35 yard run, and now the 49ers have a first down at the 50. One timeout left and 42 seconds to go before halftime. Four wide receiver set. <laughs> Montana with a three-step drop, throws it short. Jerry Rice down at the 44. And they will not use the timeout on this play as Montana's directing traffic already and the clock running at 28 seconds to go. Right flat, incomplete. Oh, Bubba and Ezra to have a little fisticuffs back there. I saw that too. Yeah, they, they had pretty good form, huh? Left hook, right cross. Big Pretty Bubba Paris. Big Bubba. He's a character. Six children that guy has. That's a heck of a family to feed, feed play an offensive tackle. They promised to pay him a $50,000 bonus if he would meet the weigh-in under 300 pounds last year. He developed a technique of coming in and leaning on the wall <laughs> and, and reducing his weight. And finally, they realized what he was doing. They moved the scale, and poor Bubba didn't make weight and lost a bonus payment. Look at that good shoulder down. Look to see that good body tilt. And now timeout is called with Rathman and Tiger Green getting into both a verbal war and a physical war. You know, the Green Bay Packers are used to playing the Bears. They're used to being in a physical game, and they won't back down from anybody. Well, not with Forrest Gregg as the leader. <laughs> What a tribute that Lombardi hey, that, said of him. He's the best football player he ever coached. That other guy standing there was just in front of him now. 
In fact, the guy standing to the left is the guy that made the chili for us yesterday. <laughs> See the guy right there to the left corner of your screen? That guy, his wife, makes the greatest chili, right? I'm still paying for it. <laughs> Are you really? Well, it's an open booth. <laughs> Boris Gregg played most of his career here, of course, and look at the Hall of Famers under Lombardi. Taylor, Gregg, Starr, Nitschke, Adderley, Ringo, Davis, and Horning. And you know every one of them, I think you said. You've met yeah, them all? I've met them all. Yeah, that's exciting. The Forrest Gregg is maybe the most intense. Even, well, you have to say Ray Nitschke was an intense guy. 14 seconds to go before halftime. First down. John Taylor. Clock is running. Mark Lee made the tie up. May not do it. No, they're not going to get it out. No. Nope. They're not going to get it out. See, Montana will Montana argue. Montana thought they were out of bounds. See? See, he's arguing right now. So that's the end of the first half with our score. The 49ers 16 and the Green Bay Packers 6. Tomorrow. Joe Montana goes 18 at 22 for 191 yards, runs for a touchdown, passes for another, and now he holds the NFL record for consecutive completed passes. Joe Montana with another NFL record, and you know, of course, he may be having his greatest season ever. Yeah, and no one's saying anything about it. Remember the bad back last year and everything? He's come back completely healthy, set a consecutive passing. A lot of quarterbacks around the league might say, get me to that back surgery. <laughs> That's right. Philadelphia and the Giants now. They're at the half, and it's a one-point game with the Giants' lead. Sims to Bavaro for the Giant touchdown on that one. Atlanta, Dallas, the Falcons score two touchdowns within a 13-second time frame. A long pass to Dixon from Campbell. Then the ensuing kickoff fumble, and they dash in for another touchdown. Washington, St. Louis, the Cardinals went ahead. A short time ago, 14-10, this was the play that did it, Irv. But Lomax going to J.T. Smith, the leading receiver in the league by the Neil Lomax right now, outside of Joe Montana, is the hottest quarterback in the league. Why don't you go pay Lomax a visit one? Well, I think I will. All right. Kansas City and Cincinnati and the Bengals, 17-3 over the Chiefs. San Diego and Houston, and the Oilers lead that one 20-2 in the second quarter. Seattle and Pittsburgh, battle of the field goals, big one here for the Hawks and the Steelers, 9-6. Indianapolis and Cleveland, and the Browns offense being shut down. Kosar last check had only about 75 yards passing in that game. In fact, it was 65 five yards I'm corrected on that now in one other score at the half the Lions lead the Rams 13 to 10 and when we come back now we'll take a look at the most famous figure on roller skates since Raquel Welsh started the Kansas City bomber as the NFL today continues on CBS after these messages from your local stations All right, welcome back to New York. Uh, tonight is the big game in the NFC Central between the first-place Bears and the Vikings, who are right behind them. Now, on Monday, the Chicago head coach Mike Ditka called the Metrodome a roller dome and thereby touched off the football controversy of the week, if you will. And as a result, Iron Mike has been hell on wheels. As word of Ditka's diversion spread, the corridors at the Bears' offices cleared out in a flash. The old all-pro tight end was wheeling and dealing with his old reckless abandon. <laughs> and now with this uh, Coach Ditka, the good news is you look great on the skates. The bad news is all my friends in Chicago say you need a dome stadium on the lakefront. Well, I, you don't have very, very smart friends in Chicago. We don't need a dome. A dome was the worst thing ever invented. Why? It was bad for football. It's bad for ever, bad for baseball. Well, look at what happened in baseball. The great uh, St. Louis Cardinals couldn't even win up here. That doesn't make any sense. Now, wait a minute. Hold on. I want to bring in somebody else here. Coach Jerry Burns, because the Minnesota Twins used that dome to win a World Series. Jerry, you play your football games in the dome. How do you feel about it as coach of the Vikings? Well, we like the, the dome. We think it's a great place to uh, play. And, uh, you know, obviously the, the home fan advantage will be with us. But... Uh, in spite of that, it's, it's, a, it's a very pleasant place. All right. Now, Jerry, you know, we see you along the sidelines, and so does Mike, and we all know about Mike's personality, but I'm always curious about Coach Burns. And so we asked running back Darren Nelson, uh, Burns, what's he like when he comes to practice? Listen to what he had to say, Coach. Well, have you ever seen that guy on Taxi, Jim? 
<laughs> you know, the guy's hair is all messed up, and he kind of wanders around. And every once in a while, he'll have something to say. <laughs> That's who Jerry Burns reminds me of. He kind of just wanders around. And all of a sudden, he comes in with a word here and there, some kind of quote or something, and it just comes right out of the clear blue sky. Uh, is that accurate, uh, Jerry? You come out of the blue sky with a quote for your men? Oh, I guess so. If, uh, if Darren uh, says so, uh, I'll go along with him because he's having a great year. Uh, what is your relationship with your players, uh, Jerry? Uh, Mike Ditka, for example, is very upfront. What you see is what you get. He doesn't mince words. How do you react to your athletes in the heat of battle? Well, you know, I, I hope we have a good relationship. Uh, you know, uh, I treat them like uh, men and uh, treat them with the same type of respect that uh, I would hope that they afford uh, both myself and the rest of our staff. And, uh, I think uh, our coach-player uh, relationship is very good here with the Minnesota Vikings. Jerry, let me um, ask you, what about Keith Millard? Uh, the allegation about the fight in the bar, will he play tonight against Chicago? What's his status? Well, he won't play tonight because of, of a calf injury. It has nothing to do with the uh, allegation uh, that took place uh, last Thursday night. And uh, let me just say this, Millard is a great guy, and uh, the entire team in the Minnesota organization be is behind him in this matter. All right, are you going to come out on roller skates tonight? No, I don't think so. I, I think uh, I'll leave that to my friend Mike. <laughs> hey, uh, Mike, tell me a little bit about the Bears' problems in the offensive line. Uh, Jimbo Covert, I saw him leave. Uh, he was in pain. No, Brent, uh, Jim won't play. He's on the inactive list. We'll play uh, Paul Blair there, and we'll back him up with a young man we brought up from uh, the inactive list, uh, John Will Jahoski. So we're really hurting in the line, and, uh, you know, against good people like Dolman and Martin, It'll be tough. Uh, we realize how good their football team is, but we're going to do our best. That's all we can do. And uh, the one thing about, you know, the fans in the Dome, they are, it's a great home advantage if things go right. If they don't, it could be just like it was in Seattle the other night. Yeah, and listen, uh, tell your cameraman to, to pull back there so Jerry and I can see if, you, if it's true that you're going to wear those uh, rollerblades. <laughs> Iron Mike, indeed. Mike Ditka and Jerry Burns, good luck. Big game up there tonight in the Metrodome. All right. Irv Cross, uh, two class gentlemen there. Well, they are, you know, but I was with Jerry Burns when the Bears beat them in a replacement game earlier in the year, and he was really despondent and really down. This time, he has his regulars at home in the Dome, and he's really souped up. He doesn't look like it, but he is. Yeah, you know, some of you folks may not get an opportunity to see the Vikings as often as Irv and I do here. This is a maturing, good football team. Now let's send you back to the stadium and the game you're enjoying on CBS. Halftime at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin, 16 to 6. The 49ers in quest of their 10th victory of the season. They want to go 10 and 2, and perhaps such a playoff berth this afternoon. And it's really been a Joe Montana show thus far. He can't do it any better. You know, when you set records and do what he's done, they start right out though with the good play action pass. When they move ball, the ball down inside that five yard line, fake the run, play and run, get the pass out to Rathman for the touchdown can't do much more. Let's take a look at that first touchdown. It came at the end of the second drive for the 49ers. They started out with good field position. And Montana's stats for the first half, and he hit his first 17 in succession. <laughs> Here was the one touchdown pass as he hit the uh, fullback, Tom Rathman, Dick. Fakes to Roger Craig just to freeze people, slips him out there. There he is on a linebacker, one and one touchdown. Then they come back and highlight Montana again. They're going to come with a quarterback draw. Gets everybody all spread out, playing pass defense. Takes a couple steps back. No back in the backfield. Hops back, gets a trap block right there by the left guard, Sapulu, and he goes for the touchdown. And the 49ers, after the missed extra point, were able to add a Ray Wershing field goal, and uh, Max Zendejas is kicked two now for Green Bay. So our halftime score is 16 to 6. And the, the defense uh, for the 49ers came in with only 14 sacks in the eight non-strike games. And look already today, Dick, four for 19 four. yards. And, and Bill was saying yesterday that the one thing that his team has been lacking thus far, though they're winning, is that they haven't been sacking the quarterback and they haven't been intercepting the ball and getting the turnover. Well, today, at least, they're sacking the quarterback. So it's halftime, and it's a 16-6 lead for the 49ers. CBS Sports coverage of the NFL continues after this message and a word from your local station. Sellout crowd at Lambeau Field in Green Bay for the 49ers' first visit here in 11 years and Joe Montana's first game here, and he has electrified this crowd with a 19-22 of 22 first half. And on third down conversions, the 49ers came in as the best in the league in converting them. They did nothing to ruin the average. They are 7 of 8 in the first half. And Green Bay, meanwhile, 0 of 6. 
49er defense is also the best in the league at get defensing the third down situation. Pretty good balance. Joe Cribbs back to the 29-yard line. Of course, there's a lot of tradition here in Green Bay, and yesterday, Bill Walsh and several of the players went to an adjacent building here called the Packer Hall of Fame. Not many of these guys have ever been here. In fact, I think Randy Cross is the only player that's played here. Right. Keith Von Horst, who's on injured reserve, injured reserve yeah. was also here in 76, but they are the only two on the on the 49er team who played here in Lambeau Field. Audible. What happens in those situations, Joe pulled out. I don't know what audible mechanics they have, but many times your audible changes the snap count to a different number. Green Bay. Robert Brown. Boy, you don't want to start out a quarter doing that. Big play right there for Green Bay Packers. Looked like a rugby scrum. Either Joe pulled out early, you'll see him right here on the center, either he pulled out early or the center snap was late. Now remember, I did say that they audible. They audible to this play. The other thing that happens sometimes in pass protection, the center sinks their rear end in pass protection technique and the hands quarterback move away from the tail. From the 29, first down and 10, Green Bay Packers, Epps in motion. Paul Ott Carew tries to come right and he's nailed. Jeff Fuller came up to force the play inside, and then Fonhorst helped make the tackle with Milt McCall. Now, Fonhorst and those guys will get credit for making that play, but Milt McCall, 53, was really the guy that disrupted the whole play. He got into the pulling lanes of the offensive left guard, Rich Moran, 57, and the big tackle, and stuffed it all back inside. Good job of playing outside linebacker by Milt McCall. Second and 11 from the 30. Opening moments of the second half is Montana fumbles the center snap from Randy Cross. Shotgun already on second down and long. Have to hurry to beat the clock. Delay of game again. Uh, now sometimes that's the coach's fault. You'll get the offensive play in too late for everything to be decided in the huddle and, and called correctly and then line up and we'll get the snap off. I used to get called for that a lot because I call the plays myself and I'm hesitating, trying to make the perfect call, get the right players in and all that kind of stuff. Oh, quarterback gets called for delay of the game. That makes it a second down and 16 after the fumble, which opened the second half. 49ers threatening a blitz. They're oh. coming. Flags are down. Bumble 10, pick it up. I think this may be a dead ball foul. Keith Euchre, the offensive right tackle, moved early. Well, maybe yes. they will, will let the play stand. Now remember. On the left side of your screen, the offensive tackle right on the goal post. You'll see him move. See, one snap prior, coming down to try to block Jeff Stover, number 72, trying to get the jump on the ball too early. In these situations, you should always try to get that football. You can never assume it's a dead ball call. That penalty is declined. It was not a dead ball foul. Here's the turnover chart for the 49ers. Minus one now, and that is current. And they've lost uh, 81 points on those giveaways. Three turnovers today. Don't expect that from a nine and two team. Third and 12 after the declined penalty. And from the shotgun again. Four-man rush. Right bumps twice, goes deep for Pascat. Intercepted. Beautiful defense. Tim McCarr, number 22, intercepting his eighth pass. You know something, Bird? It may not be true, but it looked like he set the quarterback up on this. It'll be now shotgun pass now watch the quarterback throw this up out there as he looked over there he appeared to be wide open but mckire was just gliding in position the ball was thrown and he made the move to the football fine pass defense by tim mckire that evens up the turnovers in the third quarter at one apiece tim mckire's second pass interception of 87 has thwarted a green bay offensive thrust and now the 
Bears take over, enjoying a 10-point lead, 13-14 to go, third quarter. Play fake, Montana into the flat, Tom Rathman. That might be enough for another first down. It is, as he's out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Tackle made old, by Mark Lee and Johnny Holland. That's an old draw fake. Now, notice now the halfback, in this case, Roger Craig, is lined up deeper than the fullback. Here he is back here. Now, he's going to slide bound. He's going to come right through in the flat. Here he is right out in the flat, wide open. Good play action. Throws everybody back to the inside. First down and 10. Roger Craig to the 33-yard line. That's a gain of one. Johnny Holland, uh, number 50, makes the tackle. Great. 49ers so far have turned it over three times, but after each of those turnovers, look what has happened. Fumble resulted in a Packer punt. Another fumble, a Packer punt. And the fumble here in the third quarter, the Packer pass intercepted. Bill Walsh said the defense had to shut him down, and so far they've done it. George Seifert, the coordinator, Ray Rhodes, the secondary coach, and McPherson, the linebackers, and Fred Van Oppen, defensive line, have done a super job of preparing the defense. Montana in trouble. Threw that away. Niners are getting good play from some young offensive linemen. Look at Harris Barton, rookie. Big offensive tap for 280 pounds. An academic All-American. Not only big, but also very bright. Need that kind of young people, those kind of young people coming along. Look at him. I didn't hold him, sir. Yes. <laughs> Either that or he surrendered. One the other. Third and nine. 16 to 6. 12.25 to go. Third quarter. Dwight Clark, short of the first down. 49ers will have to punt. Clark is tackled by John Anderson, number 59. Dwight Clark last week became the all-time receiver with 6,681 yards, passing the great Gene Washington. Remember Gene Washington when he was a, a college quarterback and at Stanford University playing for John Ralston, and they converted him to a wide receiver. Here's Clark. Dwight Clark, the new record holder. Max Runniger on the punt, first one today. Might as well earn his paycheck. He's the more stable guy, most stable guy I've been around that's <laughs> been in a kicking position. Do I do I get the idea of kickers drive you nuts? Yeah, they do. They drive all coaches nuts. <laughs> Stanley, it goes well, not, out of bounds. I'm not unique in that. I'm unique in some ways, but not that way. If there is a congregation of coaches who think kickers drive them nuts, they'd have to hire a huge haul. <laughs> Sellout crowd again at this historic field. It's my first visit back here since December 31st, 1967. I was in the visitor's locker room to interview Don Meredith after the Ice Bowl game, and they had a Coke machine in there. It's still there. <laughs> Only difference is it doesn't cost you a nickel anymore. It's a little more expensive than that. <laughs> Almost oh, great play. Higher. Trying, to run, trying to execute that quick screen. Great play. Tim McCarr read that all the way, and he was attacking. Now, you'll notice there's going to be play action. Now, here come the linemen. C-65, Ron Holstrom coming out. He's going to try to get that kick out block. He can't do it. There's Tim McCarr reacting as he should, attacking the quick screen. Second and 10. Oh, the wind's coming up, Burn. <laughs> there goes the spotting chart. Draw play, Jesse Clark. Watch out, foot race. Two men have a beat on him. To the 14-yard line. Jeff Fuller caught him a 57-yard romp. All right, running back set to the left of the formation here. As you look at it, quarterback gets the deep snap. Here it is, good block at the point of attack. Here he's through. Now he gets, you can't see on this screen, he gets a great block to the left of the screen by Philip Epps, a wide receiver that had a knockdown block. Paul Ott-Caruth, 
nudges forward to the 13 yard line. Jim Fonhorst and Keena Turner with the tackle. We've seen both teams execute the long yardage shotgun run inside very well. First half by the 49ers, now third quarter by the Green Bay Packers. Atlanta has scored again, and they lead the Cowboys by 11, and St. Louis leads Washington by 7. Our score is 16-6 to with 10-12 to go, third quarter. Three wide receiver set. Randy Wright has to wait. Goes in the end zone, tipped and complete. Intended for the tight end, Ed West. Fine defense coming from the underneath. I think it was Jeff Fuller, number 49, that recovered. No, I think it, Turner. it was Keena Turner that came from the underneath, released his receiver and worked underneath and batted that down. Fine defensive play by Keena Turner. Well, Bill Walsh said this guy is playing the caliber of a Pro Bowl appearance. Boy, is he doing it. He'll appear now in the lower part of your screen, number 58, Keena Turner. Here he is, right-hand corner. Came off his coverage, saw the ball in the air, has the kind of movement, defensive reaction to get there. Third and nine. 16 to six, four-man rush. Wright steps up, sack, nope. Still loose, fires it. And he was not in the grass. That's a completed pass, it'll be fourth down. How about the effort of Randy Wright? Yeah, I think Randy Wright, in my opinion, is stepping up into the pocket too soon. He's actually moving up into a collapsed offensive line. Here he is in the shotgun, directly in the middle of your screen. All right now, there's good pressure up inside there. See, there's pressure up. Now he steps right up into Stover, 72. Haley has a hold of him. He gets underneath Michael Carter. <laughs> he might be better off staying back there just a little bit more away from those angry guys. Pasquet makes the catch, and facing a fourth and one, Randy Wright calls timeout so that Forrest Gregg and his uh, coaches can talk this over. Uh, I think, personally, they've got to go for it. They don't have a choice. If you're four, six, and one, you go for it, right? Hey, yeah, especially against a 49er-style offense. Their defense is really good. You may not get down here again. 49er offense is real good. Chances are they're going to put another seven on the board somewhere in this ballgame. You've got to go ahead and go for four. Officially, it go is a it, fourth rather. and two call. All right, put yourself on the sideline. You've chatted with Forrest Gregg. Ground game hasn't gone great until the Jesse Clark run. Think they'll go with a, a pass of some sort? I think they'll run it. Do you? Defensive changes being made now by the 49ers. They sent Haley in. Fourth and two. And the selection has been made, and they will go for it. You know it would be a heck of a call if you have guts enough to do it. Up here, I have guts enough to call it. Okay. All tight. Everybody in there. Play like action. You're gonna go and play action pass on fourth down. All right. Now, they won't do it, but, uh, I mean, it would be a heck of a call. They have one wide receiver. Trips formation set right, Bird. Fourth and two. Pitch out. Great defense. Boy, you know what that reminded me of? Notre Dame's try for the two-point play against Penn State. Penn State yeah. <laughs> See, they lined up in a strong formation, set right, defensive left. The defense adjusted properly. They tossed the ball, and here he comes. Jerry it is. Stover. You'll see the ball now being tossed deep into the backfield. That's a good call. 33, Jesse Clark getting the block. Here's big Ron Hallstrom trying to get the kick out. Now Stover comes inside out, number 72, and pulls him down. Good defensive play inside. First and 10, 49ers. Montana play fake. Pumps once, has to scramble. And they try and strip the ball of him at the uh, sideline. Gee, he really had a shot. He didn't recognize it, but he had a shot of John Frank going down the hole against a two-deep zone coverage with play action. He didn't recognize it, but he had a shot to get a big one. Johnny Holland made the tackle. Be a second down and six. 16 to six, 9.20 to go, third quarter. 49ers lead, and they just held to Green Bay on a fourth and two. Backs are split. Could be intercepted. It is. Dave Brown gets his 53rd career interception. 
Dave Brown has been the guy that sort of solidified the defense. They needed that corner. They had lost Lewis a year ago, the neck injury. He comes in and takes it. Now, set strong formation to the right. Both backs. Little play action up inside. Now he throws all the way across the formation to the left side there. That's a long throw. The ball's in the air a long time. Dwight Clark right there being covered tightly by Dave Brown. 53rd interception of his career. First down and 10, Green Bay trailing by 10. Three receivers set again. Clark, the only running back. White being chased by Michael Carter. Freelances. Stanley slipped. Made the catch. He made the catch. They gave him in the down. Huh? This they might be a case for replay. I think they'll check that one out. Now, both knees were inbounds, but... Scramble situation now, all 22. Now you'll see to the top of your screen, the two people that end up being isolated at the end of the play. Straight drop back, he says he wants to throw quick to his right. Now he goes into a scramble to his left. The receiver works downfield. The ball's thrown to the outside. Well, I'll tell you, that's tough. I couldn't tell if that was in or out. Watch the Take end of it. Take a look at the end now. There's the ball coming down. I think he had it. <laughs> I think Woo. he had it. I don't know. That's tough. You have to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'll tell you, it's not conclusive that he didn't have it. That's the point, isn't That's it? That's the point. Because in order to overrule the officiating crew, it's got to be incontrovertible evidence. Right. Did you see that Stanley went into a scramble maneuver? He had run the discipline route, called in the huddle. The quarterback scrambled to them. Then it was his assignment then to go ahead and break deep, and chances are other receivers come to him. The scramble breakdown. And that play is practiced in the practice on the practice field. George Slatke is the replay official who's looking at it right now, and Frank Susi is the communicator. Here it is again, the right corner of your screen. One knee down, he doesn't have the ball yet. Two knees down, he doesn't have the ball yet. He, I think he's out of bounds. All right, we disagree in the booth. Here's the After call. After further review, the pass is completed. All right. Touchdown. They had a better shot at it than we did. John Madden has a word for this. What's he and called? Art McNally will smile. That's it. One knee equals two feet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, it was so hard to tell. Good job by Stanley. Give him credit. First and goal. 16 to 6 ball game. Carruth in motion. Clark with the with the ball. And he's down to the two-yard line. The 49ers are really tough to score on running the ball. They haven't given up a running touchdown in, what, 25 quarters? Am I right with that? Right. 25, that's six games, right? Six times four, I learned that at San Jose State, huh? Did you know? Yeah, I'm smart. Can you believe that? 57,000 on hand, another sellout here at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. And here come the Packers. Trailing 16 to six, 8 to 32 to go. All right, here's the time to throw it. Ruth, Clark, no. No, didn't get in. They're close. This is what the Packers need, though, to get back in the ballgame because their history of this year has been ineffective offense in the third quarter. If they could score now and get going, this could be the, the momentum change that we talked about that they have to come up with. Here's the line surge, a good defensive tackling right there they stopped from getting into the end zone good penetration underneath by the defensive lineman green bay hasn't converted a third down in the game they're zero of eight and they've got an inch to the goal line what a probably quarterback sneak this touchdown Gets his second touchdown on the ground this season. And Max Zendejas is on to try and draw the Packers to within three. This set up by the Dave Brown interception. After a fourth and two fail. No good! We've had 
had two extra points missed in this game. And as I said earlier, you tend to sit up here and assume that the extra point is going to be good. There have been 25 missed prior to this ball game in the league. It's not automatic. Here they are, just up over the top, giving it the ball deep into the backfield. He gets up over the top of there. Good blocking in the front. Kept the defensive lineman down. The linebacker's off the line of scrimmage. Touchdown. And here's Forrest Gregg on the sideline. Good call, touchdown, but the extra point, no good. Max Zendejas will kick off, 7.41 to go, third quarter. Missed extra points and field goals, cost him his job in Washington a year ago. He just missed one here. He's not in a very secure situation here, I'll tell you that. Cribs lets it bounce. Get and on. when he covers it, that'll be a touchback. Good move. Ray Wershing hit the left upright for the 49ers in the first half. And here's Max Zendejas moments ago. The hold looks good, Vern. It doesn't appear to be anything wrong with that. The ball's kicked. Good snap, good timing. He gets it down nicely, gets his right hand off, and here it comes. It just doesn't come around. Now, if he'd have been in college with the extra four foot ten inches there, he'd have, that'd have been good, but it's no longer in college. 49ers have had their problems in this half thus far. <laughs> and there's a graphic demonstration of it. Here's Montana back. Shovels it to Rathman. Johnny Holland hits him at the shoulders and knocks him down. See, he wanted to go deep. He wanted to go deep over there. Jerry Rice working on Mark Lee was covered. He didn't want to throw it down there. Goes to the layoff. 7.15 to go. Third quarter, 16 to 12. San Francisco leads it. Downfield, Kenny Stills covering John Taylor. You know, many times if uh, you can get nailed as a defensive back for doing it. I've seen that call. Now, that wasn't a vicious hit. A nudge, huh? A nudge. Second down and five. Rathman. Flag on the far side of the field. Yeah, and we'll trap. See what we've got. Illegal motion, number 79. That's Harris Second Barton. Down. Harris Barton. We were just bragging about you, Harris, being an NCAA academic All-American. Come on. <laughs> That'll wipe out the Rathman run. Barton, the rookie out of North Carolina. Update you on other scores. Atlanta going for its third win of the season. Boy, do they need it. Marion Campbell does. Houston, piling it on San Diego. First and second and ten, rather. Blitz. Montana shakes it. Jump pass, tipped oh. away. Looked like something out of the early 50s. Murphy, number 37, will be coming in there. I think he's lined up right here. Action. Now, here he comes up inside. There he goes right after the quarterback. Tough to pick him up. Too many guys blocking over to the wonder side in front of the action. He jumps up and gives it the old alley-oop. Somewhere in Seattle, Don Heinrich is smiling. Yeah. <laughs> Third and ten. Play fake. Scramble again. Rathman. Short of the first down, 49ers will have to punt. I tell you, you feel a momentum change here. The crowd is changing. Listen to the crowd, Vern. It's time to rally for the 49ers. Look at all the orange in the stands. It must be deer season. Huh? I think it just ended. And Max Runniger is on to punt for the second time today. Walter Stanley waits for it at the 30. High snap. High snap. Not a great punt. See what kind of roll he gets. He doesn't get much. And that'll come to a stop at the 34-yard line. Now, did it hit a Packer? No, they're no. signaling the other way around. Harry Sidney thought it had gone off one of the Green Bay uniforms. It will be Green Bay's ball. The way the, the Green Bay Packers are playing, Vern, really tells us uh, and shows us what we were talking about earlier, that the attitude of the squad is a good attitude. Four to go, third quarter. Green Bay has the ball, trailing by four. 
First down at the 34-yard line. Toss, pull on Carruth for a couple. Fine linebacker play again by Keena Turner. It was on Ed West, the tight end. Did a real nice job of playing that. Keena Turner, number 58, lined up over here, doing a real nice job of playing linebacker, getting help. Now, see him step out there. He's not allowed to be hooked. He's got the defense, the tight end whipped. He moves back inside and makes the play. Good outside linebacker play. That's a gain of just one. Keena Turner, only 218 pounds. Not big for a linebacker at all. Good leverage, though. Good knee bender. Second and nine, 16 to 12, 49ers lead. Carruth lined up as a flanker, goes in motion all the way across the backfield. Blitz coming. Randy Wright goes left, bumping. Flag. Don Griffin. Don Griffin, who's a fine young corner, evidently got his left hand on him. Pass interference, number 29. Touchdown. Here's the ball crossing the middle of your screen, coming down. Griffin moving in on the play. I think he had his left hand on him. No, it's away from him. Must have just been his body up against Stanley's body before the ball got there. But also, that ball was not catchable. That's a good point. <laughs> no worry, could you catch that football? I'm sure they caught that uh, point on the 49er bench. First down after the 29-yard penalty. Stanley in motion, followed by Griffin. They fake the pass, hand it off to Paul Ott Carruth, keep it on the ground, down to the 43. Redskins and St. Louis involved in a heck of a battle. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. All right, Vern Washington made like the Atlanta Falcons a couple of touchdowns within about 15 seconds. Now watch Jay Schrader, because he enjoyed this one. And then little John going on in the end zone. 24-17 skins back to Vern. All right, Brent, our score is 16 to 12 with 4.18 to go. Third quarter, second and seven. From the 43 of the 49ers. Wright stumbles, gets his balance, and goes deep. Man-to-man -man coverage, and a battle in the end zone. Oh, incomplete. almost had the interception. The 49ers had a strong safety blitz on that time. It was picked up with a play action, but that forces a single coverage. Don Griffin did a real nice job of covering that. You'll see what I mean here. Fuller will come from over here, get pressure, picked up by the pass protection, the play action in the backfield. Here he comes, Fuller trying to work underneath it. He acknowledged the run fake. Now the ball going to the right corner of your screen. Coming down, good coverage, good position right there. Almost intercepted the football. Frankie Neal, the intended receiver, the rookie. And there's Don Griffin, who made the fine play. Third and seven. <laughs> Shotgun again. The Packers haven't been very effective on third down. Right goes right side for Pasquet. Oh, incomplete. McKayer and Pasquet battling. And McKayer wanted the interference call. Yeah. He's upset. Don't lose your cool. Forget about it. Coaches are the only one allowed to lose your cool. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a punting situation now for the Green Bay Packers. As Forrest Gregg chose to send Randy Wright deep left and deep right. On successive plays, Don Bracken on to punt, Dana McElmore to receive it. And he waits at the 10. 3.58 to go, third quarter. Oh! Good pressure up inside. Nice punt. Bounces back to the 12. It'll be down there. And what a contrast to the first half when the 49ers enjoyed superb field position. That's right, Bert. In this half, it's been Green Bay, which has had the field position edge. 49ers now have to get back to doing what they were doing real well in that first quarter. The short play action passing, mix in with the run. Go ahead and don't try to score in one play. Just take the time to move the football. Green Bay defense gaining momentum. First and 10, 49ers. 3.48 to go. They lead it 16 to 12 in the third quarter. Jerry Rice. They hand it off to Craig. Out to the 17-yard line. John Anderson makes the tackle. Coming up next Saturday on CBS, we tip off our basketball coverage for the season. Louisville against Kentucky at 1.30 Eastern time, and congratulations to Eddie Sutton's bunch on their overtime win yesterday. And that game will be followed by our first NBA telecast of the season at 3.30 Eastern time. The Houston team goes in to take on the Chicago Bulls. Next Saturday on CBS.
Second and five, 16 to 12, 49ers. Montana has cooled off considerably. Raffin hit behind the line, and Johnny Holland gets second contact and knocks him out of bounds. But the clock continues to run as he was down by contact before being forced out. Here's the nose guard play again in the National Football League. 61, Jerry Boyarski. Randy Cross center, blocks away from him, being blocked down by the offensive guard, Bruce Colley. Now he moves back inside out. And Dick Mojaleski, the defensive coordinator, says this guy, Boyarski, is one of the old time. He could have played in the old days in the NFL. Pain doesn't bother him, the hardest worker, most character of anybody I've got on defense. Third and six. Blitz. Montana mailed. Oh. And the pass dropped. And Joe Montana was crunched right after he let it go. Jerry Rice dropped it. I think that was Mark Murphy, number 37, that got to him. Now you can see the defense is crowding the line of scrimmage. Here comes Murphy to the right side of the screen. There he is. He got rid of it nicely, but it's just out of reach, Jerry. And Jerry normally catches that football. That wasn't so far out in front of him that he can't make that play. Max Runniger will punt again as the 49er offense has run into a hurricane in the form of the Packer defense. Great punt. That's a good punt. Walter Stanley Back at the punt. 35. Now he's out of bounds after losing 10 yards. Good and punt Ron Max Heller Runniger. made the tackle. Rams Lions are also having a heck of a tussle today. Let's find out what's going on there. Here's Brent. We're a little daylight for the Los Angeles Rams, and Jim Everett is enjoying his best day ever yet passing. He'll wind up with 300 plus yards for the Los Angeles Rams. This one's easy. The corner loses Henry Ellard, 81 yards for the score, 27 16 LA. Back to Vern. All right, Brent, 209 to go third quarter here, 16 to 12. 49ers clinging to a narrow lead. It has been all Green Bay in this uh, in this half. Though they've got only the one touchdown. Ed West in motion. Paul Ott Carruth comes right. Oh, you heard that hit. You heard that one. Tim McKire, number 22. And again, the Packers are playing with Brent Fullwood and Kenneth Davis on the bench. Fullwood is in uniform. Davis on the inactive list. So Carruth and Jesse Clark carrying the uh, running load today. What the Green Bay Packers are doing is setting the tight end and to get the defense to set their front and then sending him in motion and running to where he was originally lined up. 16-12, San Francisco, second down three. Clark. That is short of the first, short of the first down at the 39. Well, we mentioned field position, and look how it's changed from the first half when the Packers took over at their own 18 on the average. This time, it's almost exactly reversed. It's looked like we just switched the helmets. Yeah. That's all, really. 49ers at their own 18, and the Packers at their own 45. Now, they have scored only the one touchdown in this half, and we've got 134 to go third quarter. Third and one, they're one of nine on third down conversions. First down. That will move the chain. Vaughn Horst and Walter with a tackle. On that kind of running play, Vern, the big thing is the offensive line has, has got to keep the line of scrimmage clean and not allow penetration. You get penetration on something like that, then you don't make that first down. That offensive line with Ken Rutgers, Rich Moran, Mark Cannon, Ron Holstrom, and Keith Euchre in there. First and 10, Green Bay. Final 55 seconds of the third quarter. You know, Dwayne Board has been back in there playing this uh, quarter at defensive end, so obviously not hurt badly in the first quarter. Play fake, right. Charles Haley, right still loose. That should be intercepted. Frankie Neal, Ronnie Lott has it. As Wright woefully underthrew a wide open Frankie Neal. Well, uh, He runs a play-action pass. Everything is sound. He's going to make a play-action fake as he comes off right in there. Freeze the linebackers, come out of it, 
looks deep, it's not there. Now he sees he has good action, gets the block. Now here comes Char <laughs> number 94, Charles Haley. He gets the heat on him, now he's scrambling out. Now this is a bad decision. Bad decision right there to try to wing that one. You're better off just throwing the ball out of bounds. Bad decision. And as a result, the 49ers take over at the 25. Montana. Bob Brown, Robert Brown beat Bubba Paris to the outside. Robert Brown, that's his third sack this year. And that will bring on what should be the final play of quarter number three. Second sack of the game for the Packers. I think they're going to let the quarter expire. Yeah. There's a difference of one second on the 30-second clock and the game clock. So the quarter will expire before the next play is run. That's the end of the third quarter with our score. San Francisco 16 and Green Bay 12. Crowd is alive as the Packers are very much in the ball game and the 49ers lead as we begin the final quarter, facing a second down and 16 with a 16 to 12 margin. Here comes the rush. Montana gets away from it. John Frank can't hang on. It'll be third and 16. As Frank had to dive low, Joe Montana with great agility behind the line. Green Bay Packers have done a real good job of taking away the outside receivers. You see they're up playing them tight right now. Normally they've been going back out too deep zone with the safeties and backing them out. Shutting them down, forcing them to go back to the inside people. You can see the safeties working, doubling up both outside receivers, forcing them to go back inside just where Joe went with the football. Third and 16. <laughs> Blitz. Murphy's coming, Montana. Delivers it to nobody. Fourth and 16. Yeah. Flag is down. Yeah, I think uh, there was an offensive lineman down the field. I'm... That's there the call. Was... I think Sapulo, number 61, was downfield. An eligible receiver, number 77, 77 downfield, huh? declined fourth down. Murphy's coming right here in a safety blitz, and they go ahead and get the screen off anyway. Here he comes. See, they're coming after him. Now the center of your screen, you see the offensive lineman, Big Bubba Paris, got downfield on the screen. And Max Runniger is on the putt. Stanley waits for it at the 40. 49ers were coming, no flag, and a fair catch call by a diving Walter Stanley at the 48-yard line. And again, terrific field position following a very short 28-yard punt. That punt was very close to being blocked. 57,000 on hand at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. They have more than enjoyed themselves as the 49ers came in and jumped to a 16-3 lead. But in this second half, the Packer defense has played very well. The Green Bay offense, despite good field position, has been able to score just one touchdown. And then they missed the extra point. Jesse Clark wrapped Good job. up. Jim Ponhorst did a real nice job of filtering his way through the line of scrimmage. He shut off the cutback and then played the play inside out and made the play defensively. Good job by Jim Ponhorst. Second down and eight. What's that? There is a booming sound coming from somewhere. And I... <laughs> I don't know. Oh. I haven't been here in 20 years. <laughs> that wasn't here last time. <laughs> Randy Wright. Got it. Good job. At the 45, Michael Carter makes the tackle. Good pass rush. That's a tough spot, isn't it, that nose, nose guard spot? Oh, it is. Here they are with a good outside rush. Charles Haley, 94, in the right corner of your screen, gets a good outside push outside. Dwayne Board, 76, coming up outside. Now it forces him up inside. Now Michael Carter comes off the offensive right guard and makes the play. Good job by Michael Carter. That brings up another third and long, third and seven. And two of 11 on third down conversions for the Packers. Here again, they've got great field position at the 45. 
Four-man rush, right, left side, a diving pass get. First down. And he got the first down at the 36-yard line. 37, make it. He came in motion across the formation, just went out there and headed for the first down area, and here he comes for the first down. He comes across in motion here, and he'll come up and work for the flag. Here he comes, now watch him work for the first down. He works out there, getting a little scrape off of that man-to-man. -man. He actually picked the defender following him at that time. Catch made by Keith Basquette, a rookie from Western Kentucky University. First and 10. Ed West, the tight end in motion. Flag is down as Haley was offside. And Carruth goes right to the 33. That tight end motion is fouling up 49er defense right now. That's the second time they put him in a position, brought him in motion. Number 94, defense, offside. First down. Then go ahead and toss the ball back to where the man left. See, the tight end was lined up here. He's coming in motion. Now they're going ahead and running back over there. Second time, and both times has been effective. See him, the linebacker's out of position now. He's following the tight end. Bill Wall said of Charles Haley yesterday, he's got a case of sophomoreitis. Look at the yardage difference in the halves. The 49ers with 302 in the first half, 33 this time, and Green Bay now with 121 thus far. First and five. And again, West in motion. Jesse Clark inside the 30 to the 28. Dwayne Board makes the tackle. Using the tight end, Green Bay is effectively in moving the point of attack and getting him right in front of that linebacker, blocking him after coming across the formation, doing a good job of changing up. Packers come in 4, 6, and 1. And the 49ers 9 and 2. It'll be second and one. That's the time remaining in the ball game. 11.50. Ball on to Ruth, first down. What a nice run that was. Just put his head down and dove yeah. through. It appeared to be just a little counteraction in the backfield. Straight man-to-man -man blocking up in the 30. The fullback works this way. The halfback works right up in the behind the blocks of the offensive lineman. There it is. Now he hands it off right up inside. See, gets a good push by the Mike Cannon, 58, on the nose guard. And the nose guard in this case is Doug Nicholas, number 97, not Michael Carter, 95. That's a first down, the 16th of the ball game for the Packers. They have it at the 25. And it's... Carter's back in the game. 11-10 <laughs> remaining. Paul Ott gets a block from Jesse Clark and a couple of three yards. In the first half, we talked about how Green Bay had gotten off to quick starts in games this year, but had folded in the stretch. And there's, a, again, the graphic demonstration of it. And today, they have not given up any points. You said you thought they needed to have something happen in the second half. Well, remember, in the third quarter, they get the turnovers and that thing, and they get some momentum. They start stopping the 49ers. They start believing in a little bit more in themselves. Hey, we can beat these guys. Second and seven. Randy Wright, that's it go, that is. that's it. Ronnie Lott, second one. No. The second interception of the ball game for Ronnie Lott. Here he is, and in the same situation. Last time they threw the interception, they had the ball moving. This time he does the same thing. They have a drive going, he gets pressured by Michael Carter playing super football today, throws it downfield. Here comes Ronnie Lott, getting his 35th pass interception in his career. The turnovers are now even at four apiece. Thus far in the game, Joe Montana has accounted for 256 total yards, thrown for one and ran for one, but most of that in the first half. We've had eight turnovers, and Zendejas has hit two field goals, 16-12, 10-26. The problem, I think, Dick, is that the, that the Green Bay defense playing so well, but the Packer offense hasn't been able to capitalize on all these opportunities. There's no question about that, but right now the 49er offense has to rejuvenate themselves and get going. The Green Bay defense is just taking it away from them. First down at the 8. Officially, they'll call it the 9. Joe Cribbs goes left and loses a yard. Good outside linebacker played by Timmy Harris, 97. And Brian Noble uses that outside play to make the tackle. 
49ers actually do a better job than anybody I've seen this year of gaining yards, running the ball, moving laterally with their sweeps. They did an awfully good job last week against Cleveland. They attempted it here. Tim Harris forces the ball back inside. No gain. Montana now 23 of 32 for 227, but he was 19 of 22 at the half. Play fake. Oh, boy, was that close. Alfonso Carriker had visions of a safety. Carriker, that was a sucker-type play. Carriker's lined up right here. Joe fakes a toss over. He wants to come out here and fool everybody and hit the tight end on the cross. Carriker did not go for the fake. See, they don't block him on that. That's a design play, and it was very effective last week, and I've seen it very effective in the past. Defense this time by Alfonso. Looks a lot better going forward than he did backward. Yeah. I'll tell you, I was impressed at how well Joe moved that time. Third and six. 9.43 to go in the ballgame. 16-12, 49ers. Here comes a straight safety blitz again. Mark Murphy. Fourth down. This is about the third time on third and long that they have run the strong safety blitz, and they just happen to be running the play. Here he comes. Now he's going to work in here, and he'll hit the running play right at the point of attack. See him moving. Here he comes. There he is. He's going inside. There's the run. He works right in behind the pulling lineman, gets the play minus yardage. Have to punt the football. Now you find out what kind of character your punter has kicking out of his own end zone. Ten-man front for the Packers. They almost blocked the last one. Stanley waits at the 50. They are not coming. The return is on. Good punt. A Pretty low. good punt. But he's got a chance to return it. Oh, I think 49ers got it. Yes. Big, big, big turnover by the special teams. And the deflation in this crowd is incredible. Turnover in a kicking game burn just eats you alive trying to win a football game. See, now they lost field position and have the ball. 49ers have it. Here it is. Now see the ball in the outside. He's swinging it out there like a loaf of bread. Get it back there. Stanley, he dropped it before anybody hit him. He dropped it before contact. Fifth turnover of the ball game for the Packers. 8.50 to go. 49ers get the ball back. He fumbled. Fumble. It must be cold down there. <laughs> But the uh, runner was ruled down before the fumble occurred. And so the 49ers retained possession. Nine turnovers on this chilly day. The, the, the weather really hasn't been terrible. Vern, I've been keeping track for a number of years of the turnover factor and the outcome of the ball game. When you're minus two in a ball game, you lose three out of four times. Meaning if you turn the ball over two more times than your opponent. And right now, the Packers are minus one. Oh, great defensive play. Alfonso Carriker that time, he just rolled up and stuffed the offensive tackle. Just knocked Harris Barton right back into the backfield. Alfonso, here he is right here, and he just whips. Let's see. It's the offensive guard that he whips, not the tackle. He just knocked the heck out of Bruce Colley, number 69. Third and five. This will be a touchdown in his 10th consecutive game. That is one short of the National Football League record held by Elroy, Crazy Legs, Hirsch, and Buddy Dial. Can you believe that? They had a man up bump and run on him. Mike David Brown, number 32, is up tight on him. See, now he's right here. He forces him back to the inside. He comes underneath the safety and hits it on the slant pattern, goes right between both safeties. Here he is, see? Sets it, see him bump there, force back, just like you're supposed to. He stuck it right in between the linebacker and the corner. Right now, Stills, the safety, overran that play. He should have been in position to make it. Same thing happened to the Cleveland safety last week. Good offensive execution. That is the 15th touchdown for Jerry Rice in 1987. The extra point is good. And the helium might have gone out of the Packer balloon. 
the last game he played in which he did not catch a touchdown was December 14th, 1986. Jerry Rice has now caught a touchdown in 10 consecutive games. That is one off the all-time record. He's caught 15 this season. That's only three off the NFL season record held by Mark Clayton. And here come the Packers. Walter Stanley, who's fumbled on the punt return, set up the touchdown toss. Montana to Jerry Rice, and Montana has now thrown for 29 this year. Joe Montana put that ball right where he had to put it. Now, you'll note that the defender, Brown, is up here, going to force him back to the inside, and the safety going to back him up deep. He comes off the ball. The linebacker playing inside will work inside out. Johnny Holland, number 50. See him force him in there. Now, right there, right there, he's in between the corner who's rolled up and the linebacker moving out, and the safety, in this case, made a mistake and rotated too wide. He didn't have to be over there. He should have been right here. Rice takes advantage of it. The ball put right where it had to be put. He gets right up inside that zone and splits it. Shows the speed that he has. And, you know, Stills in the locker room the other day was commenting he thought the Cleveland free safety made a mistake and gave him a couple touchdowns. Well, Ken Stills just made the same mistake. Don't overrun Jerry Rice. First and 10, Green Bay, now trailing 23-12 with 7.20 to go. Try the reverse. Walter Stanley. This guy can fly. Down at the 46-yard line. Ronnie Lott makes the tackle. That's a gain of 16. Toss the ball to Paul Ott Carruth there. Atlanta is still leading Dallas in quest of its third win of the year. And Washington now rolling over St. Louis by 14. Kansas City leads Cincinnati. And Houston over San Diego in the third quarter. First down and 10. Into the flat, Jesse Clark. That's a pickup of four to the 50-yard line. 6.25 and counting. Randy Wright with three interceptions. Two by Ronnie Lott inside the 30-yard line that thwarted Packer offensive drives. But the big play here was the fumble by Walter Stanley. On the punt return after the 49ers had been backed up again. They have not done much in this half offensively. The 49ers haven't saved the 57-yard touchdown toss to Jerry Rice. Second and six. Right and west. First down, 42. And Jeff Fuller and Ed West get after each other, and there's no flag thrown. Ed West, number 86, coming from right here. Now, note they'll put the action to the right in the backfield, trying to keep everybody thinking right, and then he comes out with a ball throwing away from the flow of the backs. So keep everybody flowing that way. Now you get the isolated one-on-one -on -one situation. Strong safety, Jeff Fuller comes up and makes the play. Ed West, first catch today. Good for seven yards and a first down. First and 10 at the 42. 5-13 to go in the game. Right. Walter Stanley <laughs> to the 36. Randy Wright coming into the ball game, he said, I'm not as concerned with the 49er defense physically. I'm concerned with all their deployments. They can whip you by making a mistake in misreading everything they do with their scheme. Very tough scheme to attack. Second down to three, 435 to go in the game. Right behind the intended receiver, Paul Ott Carruth. And Ronnie Lott was shadowing him, or Jeff Fuller, rather. Good pressure, Dave Board. And in there, good pressure. Four twenty-seven on the clock, and a 23-12 San Francisco lead. Carruth is on the bench. Bill Walsh prowls the sideline. Shotgun formation. Right. 
Oh. Almost intercepted. Good defense. Jeff Fuller almost had the batted pass, Bird. That's right. Intended for Patrick Scott, number 83, and Fuller was defending. Direct your attention to the left side of your screen, about halfway up. Shotgun formation. Gets pretty good protection here initially. Now he fires it right in there. Now it goes up in the air, and then Fuller comes from the left side, right in the middle. He almost gets... Actually, the receiver did a nice job, in this case, of knocking down that ball and preventing it. Pat Scott did a good job preventing the interception. Fourth and three, and the Packers will go for it, trailing by 11. Incomplete. That's a funny fourth down and three call. Sure was. The coverage might have dictated he go there with the ball. Tory Ronnie Mixon Lott, defending. number 42, a safety. They had him up here. He's coming. He's down to three-point stance. They're trying to get heat on him. They did get pressure. Here he is. He's the safety. He's coming underneath the pass protection. Now you see the delay in the corner. They're going for the big play, Vern. 49ers get the ball back with 4.17 to go. On fourth and three, Randy Wright tried to go deep, but it may have been a good call and just pretty good defense, Dave. Well, I think the defense took away the underneath stuff, so he went to the corner pattern beyond that short stuff. Joe Cribbs gets the carry now as the 49ers will work on the clock. Jerry Boyarski makes the tackle. 4.05 to go in the game. And what had been a tenacious struggle uh, opened up a little bit by the explosive catch of Jerry Rice on the great throw from Joe Montana. Put it right where he had to put it, right in between two people. And the crowd has started to filter out. 49ers. 401 yards. Sweep to the right. Cribs again. Mark Lee, the defensive back out of the University of Washington. Had you know, a chance to chat with him. He's an interesting guy. I got to know him when I recruited him to UCLA, and, uh, and he went up to the University of Washington, and I went to Philadelphia Eagles. But in the offseason, he and his brother in the Berkeley area run three juvenile delinquent homes. That's what they do in the offseason. For, for young girls. For young think. girls, for young girls, yeah. What them's called King Street. That's for the girls that are really in tough problems. And then they have the next advanced ace is the Ashby House. And that's for their people. Are, they're coming, they're solving their problems. And the next one is the Berkeley Academy. And from the Berkeley Academy, they go out into society. And uh, it's, it's, it's amazing what you find in the locker room in the NFL football. You know, guys that are more than just football players. Timeout has been called by the Packers. Next week, a doubleheader for you on CBS. In game one, most of you will see the Cowboys against the Redskins. Others will watch Minnesota against Green Bay. That begins with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern time. And then the second game, the Giants against St. Louis, or others of you will watch Atlanta against the Los Angeles Rams. So check the local listings for the game in your area. And Bill Walsh in the sidelines, about to go 10-2 and two for the year. And back home for the final three games of 87 against Chicago, against Atlanta, and against the Rams. That Chicago game will be a great football game. I would two imagine very explosive that teams, two very competitive quarterbacks, two darn good defensive football teams. I, I think Mr. Ditka and his troops are probably watching in Minnesota today. I, I promise you they'll be ready. Tight end catch. Brent Jones, who was just activated. That's the third fumble by John Frank if they give it to him. Now, this is Brent Jones instead of Frank. Oh, excuse me. Tight ends are having a problem today. Brent Jones was just activated. Uni Santa Clara graduate, University of Santa Clara. I uh, don't See. think they're going to give it to him. The player was down by contact. The whistle blew. The ball belongs to San Francisco. Brent Jones made the catch. Here he is to the left side of your screen, working up, to, trying to hit. He's already made the first down. Now he's just excited about making more yards. Gets put down right there. Yeah, he's down. No fumble. Rookie from Santa Clara and just activated yesterday, replacing Russ Francis, who's on the injured reserve list. Speaking of which, as the 49ers run the ball and Jerry Boyarski 
if indeed this uh, turns out to be Russ Francis's final year. Boy, there are a lot of folks in this league who will miss him and his contribution. What a there'll be a lot of defensive coaches be glad he's gone. That's too. right. <laughs> You know, I think Bill Walsh right now is going through, you know, he's real loyal to his players. He is, especially the old veterans that have played through the Super Bowl teams and, and that kind of, and the Super Bowl wins, and he doesn't forget it. And it really is tough for him to replace those guys with the younger players, and it's also tough for the veteran. It really is. Yep. He's going through it. You know, he's got the Fawn Horsley, a veteran offensive tackle. He had the John Ayers earlier in the year, who's now a backup at the Denver Broncos and that stuff. But he's going through the transition of incorporating younger players. And Bob McKittrick's done a heck of a job three times rebuilding this offensive line within one season. How tough was it for you to cut a bet? Oh, it really tough. See, the thing, the difference in college ball and pro ball, college ball, your veterans graduate. Pro football, they don't graduate. They stay there five, six, seven years old. And regardless of what a player thinks, a coach appreciates that kind of a contribution. And when it comes time to say, hey, you're just not as good as you used to be, it is tough. How about the Colts over Cleveland, nine to seven. Oh, Indianapolis. Second down, Montana back. Roger Craig, look at that. First down, 49ers at the 34. There's another guy that has that lean and reach ability. See his body, the forward body lean, good balance, good knee action. You really got to hit him with your shoulder pads. He comes out of the backfield. You know, he touches the ball. Here he is. Comes out of the ball, two tight end formation. Comes out of the formation. Wants to go downfield, doesn't like what he sees. He just throws it out there. Now watch this. One man miss. Now watch the forward body lean. See the shoulder pads down, the knee action. Tough to tackle that guy. Packers have used all of their timeouts. Cannot stop the clock, so this should be the final play before the two-minute warning. Harry Sidney goes left. Hauled down by Timothy Harris. Coming up later this afternoon, one of the late starting games is Tampa Bay and New Orleans. And here's a note we've just been handed. Ray Perkins is going with Vinny Testaverde as he's starting quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That'll be, I tell you, everybody knows he's going to be a great player. I'm curious to see how he does today. Two-minute warning. 49ers comfortably on top by 11. Morris Gregg's team out of timeouts. Us guys in Miller Lite usually kid around. But since it's the holidays, we'd like to get a little serious. Yeah. Have a very Merry Christmas. Why you know Ed? Feliz uh, uh, Navidad. Yeah. Thanks. To family and friends. Even to quarterbacks. We wish you health, happiness, and peace. There, there you go, Yoke. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> a great seat. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Final two minutes of what has been a very well played game here at uh, Lambeau Field in Green Bay. And there are a few 49er faithful up there in the stands. You know, Vern, I really evaluate it as more of an intense, tight game. But when you have all those turnovers as a coach, you never consider that a real well played game. You yeah, know what I mean? I, I, I get I'm your play, point. I'm not playing on your words or anything like that, but uh, you get upset when you turn the ball over that much. Nine turnovers so far. Here's Joe Cripps down at the 30 yard line. And both teams have turned it over. I would, I would, if I had to do it over, and if you'll give me a chance, I will, I'll say close ball game instead of well played. Okay, but there's been a lot of good plays. Yeah. A lot of fine individual plays and good, uh, you can't play any better than the 49ers did early in the ball game offensively. But they lost their edge, and, and sometimes that edge is lost because the defensive team keeps getting better. They figure out what you're doing. They make adjustments. They get after you, gain momentum. They gain confidence. Green Bay is not far away from being a challenger in this division. Final 120, third and six. And Rathman carries up the middle. That'll be short of the first down. So at least one more play for the 49ers, who will no doubt go for it on fourth down as the clock continues to unravel. 49ers and Bill Walsh travel back home for their final three games before the playoffs. You mentioned Testaverde, number eight, Steve Young. Used to own that job. <laughs> Tell you something <laughs> else. When, when he did two years ago this weekend, Tampa Bay played here. Yeah. And they had a 14-inch snowfall. Yeah. Young said it was the worst conditions he'd ever played in in his life. He said in coming to the 49ers, he says, I've died and gone to quarterback heaven. 
<laughs> Not much doubt that uh, he's the heir apparent, and he's perfect. I think a lot of people feel, Dick, and I'm sure you do. Oh, yeah, I really respect his talent. He's a bright young man. Uh, uh, you know, there's no better place for that kind of a quarterback to be than in San Francisco. 49ers have clinched a playoff spot. They go 10 and 2. New Orleans playing Tampa Bay. That game just getting started. The Rams and Atlanta trail. The 49ers are in the playoffs. And they will have no worse than a tie for the best record in the league. You know, with Testaverde starting in Tampa Bay uh, to, against New Orleans, he's really not like a rookie. This is late in the season. He's had a lot of practice work. He's probably going to perform a lot better than he would have if they started him early. Joe Montana throws for two. The key was a 57-yard pass to Jerry Rice in the fourth quarter. And that uh, opened it up and gave the Bill Walsh and the 49ers a 23-12 victory. Final score here at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. The 49ers 23 and the Green Bay Packers 12 will return with more right after this. He came back and he threw a touchdown pass to Baker. And it looked like it was going to be easy when it was sitting on 20 to 6. All right, let me welcome those of you who've been watching San Francisco beat the Green Bay Packers. Here's the drama of the moment. The Eagles have tied the New York Giants on a Randall Cunningham touchdown pass. They have scored twice now within the last four minutes. Let's take everybody to the scoreboard and get you up to date with all the scores before we return to that one. Atlanta upsets Dallas 21 to 10. Marion Campbell gets the nod as the NFC coach of the day, at least for that effort in that one. The Falcons score two touchdowns within 13 seconds of the first half. They make it stand up. Meanwhile, the Washington Redskins are going to win the NFC East again. Behind Jay Schrader's leadership in the second half, what a great second half quarterback he has been the last two Sundays, the Skins lead the Cardinals 34-23. to Kansas City and Cincinnati. The Chiefs rallied in the second half. It looked as though the Bengals might find another way to lose a game, but they have regained the lead in that one, 27-24. San Diego and Houston, this would mark the third straight loss for the Chargers. Are they going to fall completely out of playoff contention? They are in full retreat right now, and the Oilers have whipped them clean, 33-11 the count there. Seattle and Pittsburgh, beware the Steelers. They're now tied for first in the AFC Central. They down the Seahawks, 13-9. The Seahawks lose two in a row to the Raiders on a Monday night and today to Pittsburgh. Indianapolis and Cleveland. This was the most important game of the day in the AFC, and the Colts move all alone for the moment into first in the AFC East by upsetting the Browns 9-7 to in that game. The Bills right now are just underway against the Raiders. The Rams and the Lions. Jim Everett's best day ever. 37-16. Let's hear from the young man who is oh, maturing on. as the Rams leader. And here's Jack here. Buck. Jack. Thank you very much, Brent Musburger. There was our final 37-16 uh, at the half. We didn't know it was going to turn out that way. One thing you have to say about the Detroit Lions was they tried like heck before it crumbled out from under them. They led by the score of 13-10 to 10 at the half. And Dan Jiggets wants to talk with Jim Everett. First of all, Jim, your figures, 20 out of 26, your first 300-yard game, 324, two touchdowns, one interception. Nice going today. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to say I had a lot of help in that effort, and uh, a lot of people did a lot of good things. Jim, we're going to run to one thing very quickly, and this is the touchdown passage you threw to Henry Ellert. Just walk us through it if you can. Just take a look at your monitor down there. All right. Well, what happened was a good play fake by Charlie White rolling to the right. Good blocking. Uh, Henry Eller gave a good play fake. Guy hit my arm right there. I don't know if you could see the ball, but uh, Henry Eller came in and made a great catch. One of those lucky ones that you get every once in a while, but uh, he did a terrific job, and, and from there he took it in. Now, Jim, you said somebody hit your hand. Is that the reason why it wasn't a tight spiral? A exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, that, that thing was, was open for uh, hunting season, and, and uh, that was probably the biggest duck of the day. And Bobby Watkins uh, slipped and fell. Jim, you're enjoying the Los Angeles scene, and the people tell me that... Uh, that you're really out in the forefront there and enjoying everything that's going on and you're getting better and better game by game. Well, you know, this it's nothing that surprised me as far as, you know, I'm not talking about myself, I'm talking about my receivers. Heck, in practice, they've been doing these types of things and, and they're improving and it's a, a 
fun to work with, and now we're starting to do it in the games. And they got Henry Ellard into the scheme of things today. Thanks, Jim Everett. Thank you. And back to New York and Brent Musburger right, in the studio. Jack, you know, Nerve Cross, I want to say something about that trade, Eric Dickerson. That trade has turned out to be a good one for the Rams. First of all, I think it restored some morale out there. I think the players were upset now. And secondly, with Everett maturing, and they should have a couple of at least decent drafts. I know this is not a good year for the draft coming up, but they're going to get some help for young Everett. Well, you know, they are pleased with this development. Early in the season, he had the worst rating in the National Football League I'd ever seen from a quarterback. The last four weeks, he's come along very nicely today. 20 out of 26. That's a pretty good day's work. Did you see Georgia down on the bench? I think I caught a shot of her in the first half. One of the first women owners I have seen down on the bench. All right, the Rams, good coaching job down there. Now, San Francisco and Green Bay, the final there, 23 to 12. So the 49ers wrap up at least a wild card. And it is 23-12, San Francisco ahead. That was the final score in that one as Joe Montana went on his record-setting pace. Now the games that are in progress, the Patriots and the Broncos are underway. They are scoreless in the first quarter of that one. Buffalo and the Raiders. Bo Jackson and a touchdown pass he's involved in. I'm not sure whether he just threw it or caught it. I'll... He caught the touchdown pass. I keep waiting for him, folks, to throw one. Believe me, he's got a great arm. 6 nothing. Bo Jackson scores again. <laughs> Superman in football cleats, if you will. Now, the reason why the 49ers are not going to wrap up a division title, the New Orleans Saints explode at home. 14 nothing over Tampa Bay. Let's take a look at how Haybear did it here with this touchdown pass to Tice. That made it 7 nothing, an 8-yarder. Then moments ago, Hebert on the roll, got the production, hit John Tice for his second touchdown of the day. It is 14-0. Vinny Testaverde has started for the Buccaneers. Eagles and the Giants go to overtime. It was 20-6. Giants with the lead and Eagles score twice. We're going to check in live and keep you up to date with that one when we continue with the postgame activities here on CBS in just a moment. Sports provides great moments, doesn't it? We've got two NFL games now in overtime. Moments ago, Lowry kicked a 32-yard field goal, so the Chiefs and the Bengals go to OT. The Giants and the Eagles getting ready. Meanwhile, Joe Montana, another record-setting performance, 23-12. Let's send you out live now, and let's hear from our hero. 23-12, Brent, the final score here is the 49ers uh, had a very close ball game going into the fourth quarter, but uh, Joe Montana hit Jerry Rice with a 57-yard touchdown run, or pass, rather, and that did it. Joe is with us down on the field right now, and Joe, I know by now you have heard that you're in the record book by yourself. 22 consecutive completions. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. That's what this offense is all about. It gives you that opportunity. It's fun to be a quarterback in it. I, I want to talk about your running style, though. The quarterback draw was really a big call in the uh, in the second quarter. Oh, well, definitely was. Well, Coach Walsh had seen something early in the week about when we got down to the end zone, they were uh, trying to pay their safeties out on and, and double cover and back up their safeties and their corners and not leaving them in bump and run and leaving the middle wide open for the quarterback. There was nobody really there, and uh, he made a great call. Joe, in the second half, the offense slowed down a little bit. Now, and you got it going with the big play at the end, but did you change what you were doing or get away from what you were doing early in the game? Well, I think a couple times we, we got the ball backed up and made things a little difficult. We tried to get a couple big plays early, and uh, what ended up happening is uh, Jerry would get bumped or something would happen down the field, and I'd have to hold a little longer than I really wanted to, and I tried to wait for him, and then we got sacked and kept getting the ball backed up, and then we didn't really want to make, a, you know, make any bad mistakes like the interception and, and give them another chance. So then we kind of got away from what we were doing and just tried to, to pound out some first downs. And uh, Our defense played a heck of a game and, and held on there you know, until we got things rolling. Okay, Joe, congratulations. You're in the playoffs again. Nice game today. Now let's go back to Brent Musburger in our New York studios. All right, Vern and Dick, thank you very much. The 49ers with a win. Uh, no oh, Irv, the, um, the NFC is pretty well set. Uh, certainly Washington wins a division, and uh, San Francisco oh. appears headed there and Chicago. Which of those three teams do you like to win the championship? <laughs> I'm going with San Francisco. That guy out there who set the record today, I think he'll do it again in, in a big game. You know what? I think the biggest game of the year might be next Monday night when the Bears have to go out there because whoever can wind up with the home field of advantage in the championship game, if it comes down to the Niners and the Bears, that might be the key. We're going to continue. Remember, we've got a couple of games in overtime, including the Eagles and the Giants, and we'll have more in just a moment.
All right, uh, Irv, let's take everyone through the standings. Uh, I know there's some games still in progress, but at least we can shed a little bit of light on what's going on right now. And as you know, San Diego now has lost three straight games as a result of what's happening, and uh, Seattle has lost a couple, and so Denver could come on and win a division championship out there. Kansas City involved in overtime. In the AFC Central, look at this now. Cleveland, with two straight losses, has fallen back into a tie with the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers can win that division right now. And, of course, Houston would move up in there, too, and make that a three-way tie. And make that a three-way tie now with Houston dominating San Diego. Indianapolis at the moment is all alone in first. In the AFC East, Buffalo playing the Raiders. They must win, and the Jets have a Monday nighter against Miami. Now, in the NFC, in the West, San Francisco at 10-2. and two. They can't completely shake New Orleans yet, but at least they have wrapped up a wild card. The Rams and Atlanta must wait until next year. In the NFC Central Division, the Bears at 9-2 and two have clinched a wild card, and they can win a division title by beating Minnesota tonight. Tampa Bay, Green Bay, and Detroit playing for next year. In the NFC East, the Washington Redskins wrap up a division championship today by beating St. Louis. Philadelphia and the Giants are in overtime. So we've had an injury in that game. The Giants and the Eagles are in overtime, and we'll have more on that confrontation in the Meadowlands in just a moment. All right, well, overtime in the Meadowlands could be a long one indeed. Neither team could move the ball on their first possession in overtime. Still 13 minutes to go. Now, early in this contest, with a stiff wind blowing, the Giants were able to open up a lead. And it was Phil Sims here hitting tight end Mark Bavaro in the end zone, 19 yards. Now, Sims and the Giants made it look easy. Folks, for a time, I didn't think this ball was ever going to come down. Sims had a lot of time. There's Baker. He's got it, and it was 20 to 6, all Giants at that point in the game. But they seemed to relax, Irv, and Randall Cunningham was able to rally the Eagles. Two touchdowns in the fourth in the fourth quarter, and of course, Jimmy Giles making a big catch in the closing minutes to go into overtime. All right, well, one of the things I want to remind everybody along the line that the affiliates tonight will have the winning score from that game for you on their local news because that wraps up our post-game activities. We're going to be sending you back to the stadium and the game you watch. We hope you've enjoyed the NFL today here on CBS. We'll see you next Sunday at 12.30 Eastern. So long, everybody. 57,000 were here. They have now gone home as the Green Bay Packers fall to 4-7-1 in 1987. And the San Francisco 49ers clinch a playoff spot, and they have a, at least a one-game edge and maybe two over the New Orleans Saints, winning their 10th game of the regular season today, 23-12 the final. And it was a touchdown pass from Joe Montana to Jerry Rice that broke the game open late in the fourth quarter. Walter Stanley had fumbled a punt return as the Packers were, were uh, threatening San Francisco with a go-ahead. Then on third and five, Montana went back and found Rice, who'd been bumped at the line, split a linebacker in the cornerback, and Ken Stills was out of position. Jerry Rice went 57 yards for the touchdown. That is the 10th consecutive game in which he has caught a touchdown pass. That is one off the league record held by Elroy Hirsch and Buddy Dial. So 10 games in a row for Jerry Rice and the key touchdown toss in the win. 23-12 was the final here as the 49ers go to 10-2.